Hello and welcome to Champ Select, your go-to competitive Legends of Runeterra podcast. I'm Alex, as usual, joining me are my two co-hosts, Noble. Hello. And Hugh. Hello. And today we are going to be diving deep into the big late game decks that are kind of taking over the meta. We want to talk about the meta in general and then take a really uh, close look at TLC, Trun Lissandra, and also these Asol Demacia decks, Zoe Asol in particular, that's been popping up, I mean... On this the is like a last, ladder, like the last like couple day development. It's been really big on the master's ladder, uh, and I think it's. I mean, I'm sure it's trickling down to all the lower levels. So Absolutely. I think it's time that uh, we need to look at it with a with a closer with a closer eye and make sure we know how to play against it. So mm-hmm. um, let's see. Uh, without further ado, I know Noble, you've got the uh, meta report uh, as yeah. per usual. How's it look yep. this week? Uh, really good, actually. So this is kind of the first clear picture of the post uh, nerf world that we're living in. Um, we got 10% spider aggro. Um, this is, as always, the Cosmic Makes Plays uh, on Twitter. One that's on Twitter and on Reddit. Um, 10% spider uh, uh, aggro with a 54% win rate. 7% Jarvan Force Shen with a 53% win weight rate. 7% Trondal Lissandra Control with a 53% win rate. Uh, 6% Discard Aggro with a 55% win rate, 6% Lee and Zoe with a 49% win rate, 6% Ezreal Draven with a 54% win rate, 6% Deep with a 51% win rate, and f- uh, 5% Nightfall uh, Aggro with a 54% win, Yo, win rate. Deep got out of the negatives? Yep. Deep's in the green, baby? 51, baby. Woo! Uh, and then uh, Ash midrange at 4% with a 53% win rate. Wow. That, this meta, I mean, that seems pretty healthy. Yeah, I mean... <sighs> I mean, we've talked about this before, but the health of health of a meta is an interesting metric. It's very diverse, which is good in like over forty two percent of the decks. As always, are other not listed on the are others. Um, in Runeterra, it's very rare to see a, a meta where sub forty percent of the decks are like. Oh yeah, people people games. just play whatever. Yeah, even you know? when like the height of TF is Fjordshen, it was still like yeah thirty to forty percent. It's always going to be like that. I mean, really, I mean, not everybody's just going to net deck the most popular decks. Yeah. And I mean, and there are plenty of decks that I would consider tier one that weren't on this list, right? Like, like this Zoe Vi deck that's been popping up has been looked pretty good. And like Scouts is a deck that this person po- that Cosmic pointed out is being pretty good, but just doesn't have enough numbers. Yeah, just not quite a, quite enough. Um, pretty. In- I mean, there's not a ton of movement on uh, what the best cards in each region are, but fifty four percent of Noxus decks playing House Spider and 43% playing Arachnoid Sentry, as those two being the most played. It's like, I think a little bit of a change. It's been like Draven in the past. It was like... It was Whispered Words for a while, yeah, it was right? Whispered Words, yeah. And then yeah, that exactly. one's fallen off a little bit, unfortunately. Yeah. But uh, that's not too surprising. I mean, House Spider is... House Spider is the boy, you know? <laughs> like He just goes in every deck, and he, he's just good. Like, yeah. if, you, if you want a Noxus 2 drop... You, you can play House Spider. It's always yeah. going to be good, right? Like uh, PNZ is the classic Mystic Shot Get Excited. Um, Every time influenced by Discord Aggro. Uh, guess what? Guess what the Bilgewater ones are? The most played Bilgewater cards. Please tell me it's one of them, Sea Scarab. Nope. Damn oh it. man. Oh, that's a good. That's a good metric Isn't though. Sea Scarab so. a SI card. It is. Oh, it is an SI card. I always forget about that. It's so weird that it's an SI card. The SI card. cards are Atrocity Vile Feast. That still makes Atrocity so much at sense. number one. Yeah, I believe. Fresh it, I guess. Nasus is a. Thresh Nasus is a real and thing. And yeah. plays it usually a lot yeah. of the time. Oh, yeah. I buy it. I buy it. Uh, the most played Bilgewater card. So what? let's think about it for a second. What are the meta Bilgewater decks right now? Are there any? Is one of them Jettison? Nope. Okay. Cool. Okay. I'm, we're, we're crossing that off. I'm going to guess Zap Sprayfin. <laughs> That's my guess. Uh, 37.0% of Bilgewater decks played Nautilus. It is the second what? most played card in the region. The most played card in the region being Dreg Dredgers. Take wow. that, Twisted Fate. Holy One more card, shit. unplayable. Eat this seven drop. Wow. Why is Jettison? <laughs> okay. People playing I more that- Dre- I mean, Dreg Dredgers is better than Jettison, right? So Yeah, absolutely. It, it is. It's just I, like, I buy it. I've what seen- are you putting? Okay, what are you putting Dreg Dredgers in? I mean, you th- don't- it, it could just be playing three of them and two Jettison in some amount of lists. Yeah, I've I've seen like two Jettison deep lists before. That's fair. Yeah, I actually I had this argument with, with a friend like literally yesterday and they were like, oh, I only have two Jettison. And I was like, you got to play the third Jettison in your deep deck. And he was yep. like, really? And I was like, yeah, like you just, yeah, you, you need, you need to have a good early game. So I understand why you would cut jettison but jettison can't be the cut you need to cut some of your like mid to late game for more 
good early game cards like cut, like cut you just one need of your, cut one of your um abyssal eyes like yeah, yeah cut an abyssal eye or cut a salvage like yeah hell cut a cut a nautilus <laughs> like oh yeah i, I only play two yeah I'm you don't surprised need the third nautilus yeah i'm surprised he's the the second most popular because i feel like most decks maybe not most but a lot of decks only play two so yeah, yeah uh, how the mighty have fallen uh indeed it's that is crazy Bilgewater, yeah build water being only deep is is not something i would have ever predicted uh, could deep. you imagine <laughs> if you told us that like two months ago like the the only build water deck in two months will be deep <laughs> oh god what a nightmare yeah when it, when it was chilling at like a 41 percent win rate or whatever like oh yeah. man that deck was so bad and for like, a while you know no twisted fate no pirates not mf not gang playing click we're not playing any of these build water aggro decks twisted fate is like well and truly dead it makes it incredibly <laughs> ironic that this is my least favorite meta the game has ever had that's yeah. what a statement wow really? I'm okay. trying uh, so because yeah. before because so before guess... we taught we started recording I was like I think because uh, I before I said the words I hate this meta this is one of my least favorite metas and then I like thought about it more and I was trying to th and I just tried to think what is a meta that I hated more than this one and I can't like help me out here for a second like what did what metas did you guys hate I don't know yeah we're gonna have to we're gonna have to talk dive into this I think so I can't stand it I don't know what 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 awful yeah, we'll metas get, existed before? We'll get back to this one, but what do you think the worst? I mean, Gullhard too strong was like. I liked that meta, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I got to play a bunch of Zoe Lee, and that was like my favorite deck. So I had a bunch of fun with that deck, or with yeah, that okay. with that meta. Uh, man, maybe this one's only been out for like a week. So like any of the ones that I would like less are because they lasted so long. And I think it might be that TF Fizz meta. Like I really loved TF Fizz, but it was just really stale. And this meta has only been around for a week and a half. Hasn't, so. it, hasn't it been two weeks? I mean, it's been two weeks since the patch, but like the meta settled like a week ago and it's still evolving. Yeah, yeah. that's fair. Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure that I have a good answer. It has least felt like that is. where I'm at in the yeah. latter. I'll say yeah, that. What do you, so what do you not like? Yeah, yeah. What are what are your what are your okay. standout problems? So we've got. So we talked about the whole aggro thing last yeah, week, right? Absolutely. So right now, it feels like where you gotta be is, and someone please come in here with a deck list or <laughs> tell me I'm garbage at the game if I'm wrong about this. But it feels a lot like you have to pick a side to beat, and those two sides are. These super low to the ground aggro decks, decks of which there are several, um, like Sand Scouts being one, Spiders being the primary one. Yeah. Spiders um, and Discard Aggro are the two on the and list. And Discard Aggro, those are the those are the two primary ones. Um, and then we've got these really really big splashy late game decks that are incredibly hard to beat. Um, Sandra Lund just with Sun Lassandra, Trundle, Lassandra Trundle, TLC. And, uh, deep, <laughs> deep TLC and deep currently on uh, this meta report, the, but it's, it's now funny. Zoe Asel. It's funny. Deep is not even one I would like put on that. Like deep to me is, is much closer to mid range than late game. I actually agree. It feels like, it, I mean, it, you're, you're going to lose the late game probably to deep, but not with your late game deck, right? Like, yeah, if you're exactly. like, you're going to, you're going to be deep with Aurelian soul. Right, you're gonna be in the late game. You're gonna be deep with TLC and the Watcher in the late game, right? So like any of the late, like any of the real late game decks are gonna beat it. Which is so. why I'm really surprised Deep is sitting at a 51 percent win rate yeah, because it is generally maybe people are teching harder. It's easier for Deep to tech against aggro than it is for um, oh Nightfall aggro is also another one. I mean, currently that breakdown that I said of the most all the decks above a four percent win rate is two two aggro decks. Uh, three, I guess we're, we have to count Nightfall. Nightfall is an aggro deck. Nightfall is very relevant. Discard aggro it's good. And Spider aggro. Um, and then Ash midrange, Ezreal, Draven, Lee, and Zoe as like middle of the road decks. And then and and Jarvan, Forshen. And then Trundle, Asandra, Control. And if we're talking about best decks, I think Zoe Asol, though, it's not represented in this data because it's from a little bit ago. That deck's relatively recent. That deck's pretty new. Yeah. But yeah. I expect we'll see it on next week's um, report. Zoe Asol is one of the big decks. TLC is the primary one. Um, I agree. It's hard to to beat all those decks. It's yeah, and, and it's okay. It's absolutely. I don't want to sound like oh, it's it's dumb that this meta is dumb because I can't have a deck that beats everything. Like that's not how metas work. Like that will if there is a deck that beats everything, that's the pro. Like that's a bad meta. Like you can't have yeah. that. Um, it just feels but, really 
picky. It feels or like, it feels binary. It feels yeah. um it feels like when I queue up for a game, the the game is decided by my matchup, not by my play. By play. Um and obviously there's 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 leeway to that and you know there's if you're a better player it's yeah there's always there's always room to to play better and win but regardless you think it's more so than it has been in the past yeah i feel like in the past i've just been able to like pretty handily just like jam up to masters pretty pretty quick and this time it's just like been a huge struggle i feel like i just can't leverage my skill as a player as nearly as much anymore i feels like every game you are playing spider aggro I mean, <laughs> like, I know that deck. it has a lot of, it is hard. It has no, no, a lot no, no. Of I, but like, I've played a, like, I've played a lot of spider aggro, but I also have played a lot of Zoe Lee. Like I've been starting to change it up because I can't climb. Spiders aren't getting there. Yeah. Spider, like spiders isn't just, do, isn't doing it. Like people started playing more things that beat it. Like right <laughs> when it first popped up, people weren't quite ready for it. People were just like, Oh, this it's an aggro deck. It's an aggro deck. You know, it's spiders. Like that. Let's I play remember. some avalanches. It'll be fine. Yeah, it's not it, fine. That's not enough. <laughs> yeah, avalanche. Avalanche is not that scary to spiders unless you have like two of them and a withering whale. Like, yeah, yeah, it's ridiculous. It's not a big deal. Slow but, spells are pretty easy to develop past. Yeah, it just feels like I don't know. I've I've played every deck in my every single deck in my list of decks that are built have been played on ladder in the last week and. None of them have felt that like none of them felt great. Like there's usually I can find one or two where I'm like, this feels pretty good, you know, but none of them have really felt that good. And even Zoe Lee, my like tried and true, like this is the deck, even, deck. even when it's bad, it's still good because it's always good because you can't like if you're a good player, you can beat people with it. If yeah. you know the ins and outs of the deck and you play the deck a lot, okay. you can just win. That deck has a 49 percent win rate and. I think that that is perennially too low. Like the deck has had like below a 50% win rate for like almost its entire life. So hard. And it is no, there is just no way. <laughs> and and it's been a tier one deck for most of its life. I guess not most of its life, at least tier one or two with below a 50% win rate. But everyone agrees that it's tier one because it's that hard. Like yeah, yeah, it's crazy absolutely. how hard it, that deck is. It's super hard. And also this is like one of the most brutal metas to be playing that deck. Oh, and you've it got, is punishing. you've got all these aggro decks that'll just kill kill you yeah. really fast yeah. um two of which two of the most played spiders and uh nightfall are jamming fearsome which is like so impossible for you so to deal good with. against eye of the dragon like it's insane like i have dragon does absolutely nothing against it so many of your creatures just can't block it like mountain goat is your best friend is, is this opinion yep. from you hugh perhaps colored by the fact that you've lost your uh lost your final boss like three or four times <laughs> i'm mean, just curious like <laughs> i might feel the same if i was like yeah, I don't know. Um, that's like that's what I initially like chalked it up to. I was like, this is just me being salty about losing a bunch. Yeah, just, and I played, so I played. Um, I play. I have to play most of my room terror on the weekends because uh, I'm currently working from five a.m. to three thirty p.m. every day. Yeah, five days a week, which is not great. But yeah. um, I played twenty two hours of Legends of Room Terra from. Friday through Sunday morning. Okay. Um, and I bounced from Diamond Three to Diamond One ADLP up and down <laughs> just five or six time. times, like the uh, entire time. I, I like it's uh, it's been it's been pure misery. That was like, my last season. It was awful. Do you remember <laughs> when I got stuck in like Plat Three for, for like, like three weeks? For like three weeks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do. <laughs> I do, and, and it's like, and usually it's because like this has happened before. And it's been fine because I've been like, okay, well, I'll just go back to playing. Usually it's Zoe Lee or pirates or pirates. And, you know, um, before also there was TF Fizz and uh, I like didn't even play that that much because I just like started to get bored of it. It just either something feels different this time. And maybe at the end of this, maybe it is just me like just so for having it, a bad time, but like it so, just doesn't something feels off for what it's worth. I actually would love to pause it that I think and and I'm sure we're going to talk about this a little bit more, but I think that the deck that has the most leverage against the field, like the most ability to play any given game is Zoe Asol. Yeah. And I, I think that that's a big part of why we're seeing it at the top of Masters Ladders, reminding me a lot of the like TF Ophelios decks where like 
This deck is good and can win against anything, and it's really hard and ravages a lot of play skill. So yeah, I was gonna that say was that gonna, this... that's gonna be my my next recommendation for you, and then we'll get it. I think we're yeah, gonna. Yeah, talk I, about I, it I was a gonna lot. say that uh, I think that one of the things that we want to talk about today is to go deep on Tunnel Sandra Control and Zoe Asol, so that we can kind of iron out some of those quirks and some of those like really matchup specific, game specific, deck specific tools that you need to climb in a meta that's this um like Diverse, even even binary balanced. yeah like, like it feels very like rock paper scissors e like there's just a little like bit yeah 10 different decks that all have like 52 percent win rates and all kind of win against some of them and lose against some of them um and and that is frustrating like, yeah, like let's be clear no Absolutely. i don't think anyone likes a rock paper scissors meta and i think that that's kind of what you're describing here Hugh. yeah and that's and i don't know how true that actually is it's just it's just how it's felt yeah these these are our week week one takes or week two takes or whatever yeah. um and yeah so how how are we going to combat these rock paper scissors metas and the metas constantly developing in this game right so like uh, so, i think let, let's just get into it yeah. right Let's start with TLC because it's a little more popular, I think. Yeah, and um, we'll, we'll save the juicy, potentially best deck content for the later half of the episode. So yeah, you're going to have to listen. Keep you listening. You're going to have to listen. It's, it's a trap. Um, <laughs> uh, so we're going to do kind of, we're going to break down uh, TLC's current list uh, and then kind of talk about its game plan, how to play it, how to beat it, flex slots, tech, um, and then some variations people play of it. Um so yeah, let's start with a right list. In. Do you yeah. have a particular list you want to go, or can I? Yeah, uh, yeah, you, you can. You can read, you, read I'll just, yours. I'll just read the one I have. So uh, I don't think we we collaborated anything, and so I'm sure we're going to have to talk about whether or not you think this list is good. But well, this is the yeah. list I'm playing. I have one I pulled off the master slider, so it'll be really interesting to get. So so I've played a lot of TLC. So this list, uh, I have I have made this list basically. Um, I've seen a couple other people post things pretty similar to it. Um, which is always nice because I don't think I'm that good of a deck tuner. Yeah. So I'm always really happy when I see someone on Twitter that I like know is good at this thing and they like posted licks that's very similar or whatever. But uh, here's what I'm currently playing. Mm -hmm. um, so this is three copies of Fading Memories, yep. three copies of Everos and Sentry, three copies of Entreat. Uh, I have three copies of Vile Feast, two Flash Freeze, uh, one Ice Shard. Two Kindly Tavern Keeper, three Lissandra, three Avalanche, two Babbling Bjerg, three Blighted Ravine, three Trundle, three Withering Whale, two Vengeance, three Spectral Matron, and one copy of the Rumination. So interestingly enough, uh, a lot of the differences here in this list come at the bottom of the curve. So um, you said three Vengeance? I have two. This deck's playing two Vengeance, two Whale. I do um, have three Whale. Yeah, I think one, so one of those Whales looks like it's cut for this deck's playing two Catalyst Vans. I don't know how right that is, but it's what this person's doing. Um, so basically, they cut a Babbling Bjerg and a Withering Whale for two Catalyst Vans. And then below that, um, they're playing the full three Ice Shards instead of one. Uh, and then they cut those Flash Freezes straight across for three Sisters. Um, and they're also only playing two Sentry and two Vile Feast. Cool. So yeah. so it's, it's reasonably different, but... But, like, all the same cards, except for some Catalyst of Aeons, and then, like, tweaking the numbers. Yeah. Oh, and I guess three sisters. And they have three sisters freeze. instead of Flash Freeze, which seems good, honestly. That that might be a change I want to try. I actually haven't tried that change, but I yeah. could totally see that being good. There's a lot of turns where you just have plenty of mana in this deck. And There's also just, like, some don't very play cards. cute interactions you can do in the mirror with entombing your own things in advance to ensure that they um, come into play on your like turn eight or nine a watcher turn yeah that is really cute <laughs> that sounds very very cute i'm yeah. into that okay so uh regardless of the actual list and we can get into the specifics about that um so let's talk about the tlc plan tlc very very popular i assume that most people are familiar with it trundle um, Sandra, trundle control, Sandra, slash, control combo. slash combo yeah the t the c is up for debate yeah absolutely <laughs> um, uh but uh so basically these decks are trying to play Avalanche, Blighted Ravine, mm -hmm. yeah. and whatever else they can put in the way uh -huh. until they try to combo kill you on turn eight or nine. And they're trying to combo kill you with the Watcher and with Ice Pillar and with Spectral Matron and some Fading Memories. Some number, like, basically your combo cards are Lissandra, you need one of them. Ice Pillar helps quite a bit, so a Trundle, that because helps. Because it's, it's a free eight drop to look Correct. Level. Yeah, absolutely. And it's really good with Fading Memories. Fading Memories is his combo card. Spectral Matron is one of the key pieces. Yep. And then, uh, yeah, I think that's it. 
Yeah, right, so the so, ideal looks like you've played a Trundle on turn five. Yep. You've played a Lissandra maybe on turn seven. Yeah. And then you go Ice Pillar, Fading Memories, Ice Pillar, and then you Spectral Matron, the Watch. So the second Ice Pillar flips your Lissandra and creates the Watcher in hand. And then you can Spectral Matron that Watcher into play as an ephemeral copy, which makes the original copy cost a zero. So you yep. have a lot of... You have a lot of Redundancy. It, redundancy. You have two watchers, one of which is ephemeral, and you can play the second one that turn. And and this combo is it's very, very powerful. And it's surprising how versatile the, or how interchangeable those pieces are. Like if you have two copies of Spectral Matron, you can easily find a watcher turn, right? And you know, you don't even need Trundle. Sometimes you can play a Spectral Matron makes a Spectral Matron Attack. flip my Lissandra. Right. Uh, and then go to my turn and Spectral Matron makes the watcher play the watcher. Right. Like you don't even need an ice pillar in those scenarios. So that's fading memories. Yeah. That's one of the reasons why I have two babbling beer in my list is because uh, Spectral Matron makes uh, the second copy of Spectral Matron is really good, I think. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, I mean, I lost a game too. Matron by Matron attack you matron by matron attack you yeah, like, matron by matron attack you that is a, the third one can't matron the matron because, yeah matron of whatever will attack you or everosan sentry who cares yeah, yeah. right like um it's a really it's actually a really good plan just and for eight mana you get to put two bodies on the board that matters a lot especially because you know a lot of the time uh so so this deck is really good at putting putting the clock on you like you need to win by turn eight or turn nine because Absolutely. They're going to kill you almost every time. And then the other key part of the deck that makes it the control half of TLC, of the C, um, is getting to play cards like Avoris and Sentry. And then very importantly, like three Avalanche, three Blighted Ravine, almost always. Yeah, you, there's then, no way you can play the deck with less than that. And then uh, Vile Feast, Ice Shard, Withering Whale. Withering Whale, all adding up to a ton of damage to your opponent's units. And that'll let you kill five drops sometimes. Like an Avalanche, Absolutely. an Avalanche... Uh, a block and an ice shard will kill five drops like you just have so many different ways to ping and since the damage is permanent you just kind of keep ticking there's a down lot of healing in this deck yeah. too yeah. so it's really hard to get through uh this deck is very powerful Absolutely. very very powerful and and is a big reason why like he was kind of feeling that pinch on the meta is because this deck is at the top and you you have to have a plan and it's really hard to have a plan against this deck i think yeah absolutely and the plans that beat it generally i've found lose to like really really hyper aggressive decks the only um, yeah. the only deck i've found that like consistently wins this matchup is uh lee zoe i think that that's or at least that's the best deck that, that i think has, i'm sure that, that you could build something but like i think that zoe lee is the only deck that consistently wins the, this matchup. the best deck that also consistently wins this matchup correct is that what you mean? yeah, yeah. Yeah, I that is how I have felt as well, well which is why I've look at the matchup fallen table. back to it. Uh, so based on the meta review, it looks like TLC is so TLC is kind of the queen of polarized matchups. TLC is 70% against spiders on ladder. Sounds about 57% right. 57% against Shen Jarvan, uh, even against the mirror, obviously. 74% against Timo Burn. <laughs> That is the most rude. I I was so close to losing my final my D one eighty LP game as TLC against Timo Burn. I, I was at like four. And I was like, oh, I was at four. My opponent was at two. He has like two cards in hand, rips a new one, and I'm like, oh god, please don't kill me. Please don't kill me. He like attacks me with the Timo for one. I spike the third copy of blighted ravine to heal to seven with my opponent at two. Oh, <laughs> sick. And the then they third blighted oh ravine. and then it kills them <laughs> yeah that's them. sick okay. yeah it was hype. so it's 47 percent against lee zoe so not even that bad it is 30 percent it has a 30 percent win rate against deep um what what yeah how um, how and then it's 70 percent it's 68 percent against beating ezreal draven I was gonna it's 65% against beating hold, Nightfall and hold it's 61% beating Ashville. Bog. Hold on. We got to go back to this deep stat. Is deep 30% against TLC or TLC 30% against deep? T TLC is 30% to win against deep. What? And then How? rush it and it's like 60% against other meta decks or plus. Hold on. I need to. I need to think about this. Have you ever? Okay. I've okay. played a lot of TLC and I feel like this matchup's a buy. So. That's how I felt too. I've, I, I've I'd never saw that stat. I just thought this matchup was a buy. So yeah. th this is interesting because the thing I've kind of always liked about Deep is that normally TLC in my mind is the exact type of deck Deep is beating always. Uh, apparently, you're right, and which, which is weird because I felt like this was an exception. I felt like TLC was weird 
because it was a late game deck that went big, had a weird like combo finish, but also could do other things. But it felt like it beat deep. And I guess that's well, obviously it's well, when they water you, you're deep. Facts. <laughs> that stems so, the rules, man. All right. So I guess I. All right. Let's think about this for a little um, bit. Or at least I need to, to try to wrap so my head around this the, for a little the, bit. Think of it this way. So one big thing about this matchup. So none of your removal th- really works. That's it's yeah, not okay, three but, lost treasures. OK, that those are good. Those are really we, good. we have three copies of that card Two. when you're deep. Do we? <laughs> Uh, one, two what or three, but okay, whatever. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, we have at least two. Yeah. And if you're smart and you don't have to be that lucky, but if, if you'd be a little lucky to draw. You got to try and hope two. you hit. Yeah. But also when you get deep fast enough, um, the last cards in your deck are always just like Nautilus, Nautilus, Maokai, Maokai. Like, All right, that's true. You yeah. you get to chain either Maokai or Nautilus forever. And the first time so if they obliterate your deck then you have seven mana and play your nautilus then you refill only the tossed things right it doesn't it doesn't it it's not obliterated things it's i just agree tossed. yeah I think it's, it's just tossed sea monsters right yeah, yeah okay it might be tossed units that cost four or less i guess I four or more hard. i have that's what i meant i just i'm just, I'm just i'm i am at a loss for words it's, that this it's matchup funny. is that have you ever bad. considered that you're just good uh, no, I hadn't even thought about it, which is, I, which is why this is astonishing. I've to me. played this matchup not a not a ton. It's only been like six or seven times, but I've only won it as deep. Like, I think I think I'm, th- uh, I think I won three out of the seven games I played. Yeah, I think I'm five zero with TLC against deep. Yeah, it's weird. And one of those games, my opponent played make three make the three plate worms on like turn four. Or turn five. Yeah, tossed, <laughs> like it, my opponent made made a million, like made like a million power on turn five, and I was like, "Oh, this is gonna be bad." It's, it's tossed allies work. that cost four plus. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, I I guess it, it makes some amount of sense, right? None of your removal lines up well. Really, you can't. You have a hard time yeah, killing any other Ravine big threats. Like, uh, you, you're really gonna need two pieces of avalanche plus blight ravine or whatever to <laughs> kill a board. Yeah. Um, so they have obliterates. So they're pretty good at killing your Lissandra. To obliterates keep it from are pretty reasonably good. I, I don't know. I, whatever. I mean, so, I'm sure the data isn't going to lie that hard. I'm, yeah. I'm just a little taken aback because yeah. I would have guessed that it was 70 30 in the other direction. The if, thing, if I told you it was 70 30. Yeah. Or just, that's why just, I clarified. Okay. Because I was in shock. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> I was like, wait, wait, wait. Do you mean? Like, I didn't believe I mean, it. I'm, I thought I'm I was 95% sure I'm reading that chart no, right because all right. of the other yeah, numbers. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I'm sure you yeah. are. I'm just, I'm just astonished. Yeah. So, I mean, also just talking about this real quick yeah let's like, let's talk so yeah that aside let's talk about the rest of the matches well like we're seeing tlc be 70 plus percent against aggro decks yeah i think 74 percent against timo burn may be like one of the highest numbers i've ever heard 61 65 68 and 70 and 74 against the aggro decks and mid-range decks like 68 against Esdraethan, 65 against Nightfall, 61 b- b- against As Sedge, like, and then 70 and 74 against okay. Spiders and Teemo. Like, these are decks that all don't have so, a plan. I feel a little bit vindicated. Yeah, yeah, the, the numbers absolutely back you up here because yeah, this well, is exactly the feeling I have about this meta. This like because the is the he, TLC is just crushing it. Well, no, no, no <laughs> it's it's not a. I mean, partially yes, that's mm-hmm. part of the problem, but. Just one deck crushing it by itself is fine because that won't happen for very long because the devs are good at their job and they nerf things fairly quickly and, you know, things like that. Um, Because if a deck just was 70% against everything, like, that would get fixed real fast by by them. The problem is the deck also is apparently 30% 30 to beat D. Like, you can beat this deck, basically. And Mm -hmm. it these numbers are so ridiculously high. Like, I don't think that like i can't think of very many decks matchups in across all card games I've ever played in the history of card games that have 75 percent like 74.8 percent against timo burn that's obscene that like, might be that literally might be the highest number i've ever heard in yeah. any card game the, other it, than it's hein like i can't i can't think of one that's that's higher i think i i think maybe there were some there are some old, abysmal uh, abysmal uh, eternal magic, eternal format matchups. Sure, I believe that. Uh, I think there's some really bad old Hearthstone matchups, yeah, but this say, is this has to be the worst. I was going to say in like game. in Legends of Runeterra, yeah, especially because I mean, in Legends of Runeterra, right? Like 
the, you know, there's no mana system to get screwed by. The mulligans are pretty generous in most deck. In most cases, the like, it's hard to lose a game to variance in Legends of Runeterra. Yeah, uh, at least harder than most card games, I think. So yeah, for sure, the fact that these numbers are are astronomically high is probably a little bit of that, right? Yeah, is because like, because you're not going to get, you're not going to. You're not have gonna, draws where you like literally can't play the game. Yeah, you're not gonna you're not gonna randomly lose very often. So you're just gonna <laughs> lose. You're gonna to win DLC your good matchups a lot more. Yeah, yeah, yeah with demo or whatever. Um, and I want to I wanted to say also that um, uh, oh, I, I just kind of wanted to move on a little bit to how to play it and how to beat it because oh. that kind of feels yeah, like what yeah. we're talking about so already. So let's start with oh, a really quick um, yeah, on that note. Uh, uh, the reason I originally thought Deep was supposed to beat this deck is because. Deep has a good track record of beating decks like this because the thing it does really well is it's not quite a late game deck. It's more of a mid range deck, but it goes so, so much bigger than the average mid range deck. A yeah. reasonable amount. Uh, like like Maokai same, and Nautilus with like a bunch of sea monsters. Well, yeah, like the, your sea monsters all suddenly plus three, plus three, like everything suddenly under cost because Nautilus and you can get Nautilus out. Like you don't ramp, like you hit them on oh, turn seven. You can also, sorry, you can also just play a treasure card after they watch you. Like the deck has a ton of outs to the watcher is probably a big part of why. That's why I mentioned. Like there's just like so many. Oh, I thought you were saying that. Like I was trying to figure out if when they watched your deck, you got to draw the treasures. No. Okay. Yeah. There's there's a bunch of there's a bunch of outs to to put cards. Yeah. Back Nautilus, in your deck. Nautilus says shuffle cards sense. back in. Yeah. Uh, your chance spells shuffle cards back in, and this deck seizes chance spells always. Because it's tossing. Because it's tossing. This is a great example of um, how to beat the Watcher. So, yeah. So let's obviously get into this. the point is you you want them not to be able to play the Watcher. Like you want them, they have to have Lissandra on board to to do the thing because uh, Spectral Matron's eight mana, and uh, and you can't play that on the same turn as Lissandra ever because you just can't. Correct. You can max out a ten unit mana. Um, so you need to have Lissandra already when you start doing your ch chain of free ice pillars. And if you were going to kill matrix. them on turn eight, correct? Yeah. yeah. Um, well, no, you always have to have Lissandra in play first, or you know, or all that, thing thing. Lissandra put the watcher in your hand, kill them the next. Time. I think a better yeah. way to say that is Lissandra, in one turn. Sorry. You, you're you're oh sure. Uh, I was going to say uh, at some point you need to have seen your Lissandra flip. That's yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that means that you can't on turn eight, if this deck does not have Lissandra in play. Yeah, you can't die. You, you can't die. Correct. You can't die to that. I'm sure you could get a Vorth and Heart uh Sentry Beast. <laughs> um, <laughs> if you if you happen to be it too. Yeah. Or they like, I don't know, they you, have a trundle in play and they like you like Ice Pillar Matron them, like that'll that'll kill a lot of people. Like yeah. flips trundle plus double spectral yeah. matron with an ice pillar out. Trundle we'll, we'll just can kill you. Like yeah, there's, there's absolutely yeah. And that's a part of why the deck's good. But if you so you need to disrupt them on that turn. It's the combo itself is hard to disrupt because you can't respond to the units refilling the mana and the spectral matron like triggers and stuff. Um so you need to either kill them before then or put enough pressure on them that like they can't do that because they're gonna get decimated or whatever. Um, or kill their Lissandra before it flips. Um, yeah. So, uh, or, or silence or stun the watcher. Yeah. That was would the last you, thing I was going to say. If you would, I would love to hear the, so we talked about how the, all the good matchups for Trundle Lissandra. If you still have that up, I would love to hear the bad ones. It was only deep and Lee Zoe. And it was it? 50, it was 47% against Lee Zoe. Yes. That's the problem. Wow. Okay. That's the problem. Yeah. Well, fair yes, enough. Looking at this. Looking at this graph, like if since it only has like a fifty four percent win rate, I'm sure that it has like a bad matchup against a bunch of like like Zoe Asol that isn't on this list. Yeah, um, and I'm sure that there are plenty of like mediocre matchups. Like maybe it's bad against pirates or scouts or whatever. It, but it just it's, isn't. It's not up. bad against pirates. Yeah, <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's not I bad against agreed, pirates. I but I, probably but I'm not saying, great like, against scouts though, to be honest. Yeah. Um, I could see scouts being good against it because it yeah. has Rangers Resolve and puts to deal with that pressure. Or like Sandy yeah. Scouts is probably really good against TLC. I've had some trouble with that deck in the past. Yeah. We have a hard time killing Azir. Yeah, and they aren't on the list of decks. Yeah. But, it, but looking at that <laughs> list, you're like, holy hell, this deck is obscene. I, would, I also love that Deep's like chilling with like a 51% win rate and we're just like, it's 70% against like the second most played. Like Deep is just getting solo carried by this matchup, right? <laughs> yeah, like, that was the it question. must have like a 47% win rate against the field and just crush deals. So you like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> which is so, which is, ex which is why another 
I was surprised when Deep had a positive win rate at the start of the episode too. Yeah, and now yeah. all now all now my all everything's the, lining up. The pieces fall into place on these numbers. Except I yeah. still don't buy it. And, and these numbers don't need to necessarily represent exactly what is going to happen in like a tournament or anything. I, I don't think they do, but they are a great example of why TLC is a really good tournament deck because when your opponent has two decks that are like forty percent to beat it, they just have to ban it, and then you get to do something else. Um, yeah. So I I guess. Uh, talking about how to beat TLC. So let, let's focus in a little bit more on that. So when you're playing against TLC, the number one priority, I think, is Lissandra. Like, yeah. you need to be thinking about Lissandra. Lissandra's the most important card. Yeah. Uh, it's a very interesting decision as the TLC player whether or not you should play your Lissandra earlier or wait until it's already flipped to play it later for, like, additional combo protection, basically. And they need to make that decision every time. So don't assume that your opponent doesn't have Lissandra if they don't play Lissandra with three mana. A yeah, lot absolutely. of the time, it is very correct to not play your Lissandra until it's already flipped. It, that's true in most of the matchups where you aren't going to die, I think. Yeah. Right? So you're you're not playing this on turn three to get like randomly obliterated against OEA soul. Yeah, absolutely. That's yeah, or, just, or like that's fought just not by a screeching or right, like, eaten by a screeching. Yeah, dragon I've played it on. Turn. Sometimes you play it on turn three because you're like, this 8 8 might matter. Um, so, and here's the next piece of advice I have for playing against Trundle Lissandra, and that's their board matters. The amount of units they have on their board. If they have five units on the board, they can't play like, like they can't spectral, they can't spectral matron and watcher. Right. Yeah. So, and, and it's even more true with less than that. It's even true with less than that. It's hard for them to have enough board stuff. Uh, room on the turn they go off because Lissandra makes a frozen thrall, which I'm convinced is downside on this card. If yeah. Lissandra didn't make the frozen thrall, she'd be better, I swear. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> For specifically this reason, because this comes up a lot in this yeah. deck. And then Ice Pillar, Ice Pillar Matron is like four slots. That's if you had, yeah, Ice Pillar, Ice Pillar Matron is four slots. So you need to have literally only Lissandra and her and thing, her thing yeah. in order to be able to do, in order to be able to do it all. That doesn't happen that often. Yeah. Um, and it means from the other side, if you have the health to give, don't don't block their babbling Pyrrhic sometimes. Yeah. Don't Averos and Sentry is a card that you can basically just not block yeah. for the whole game almost. Like yeah, them drawing you. a card is the best part of the card. It's actively bad for them to have it on their side of the yeah. board. They're going to have to kill it. Like I have multiple times, like my opponent, I played an Avaros and Sentry on turn two. My opponent didn't block it until turn seven. And on turn seven, I was like, I have to cast Avalanche this turn so I can win. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I have to. It's the only thing it's killing is my own Avaros and Sentry. And I cast it. Yeah, right? absolutely. Like, that happens a lot. So be really mindful, I think, about when you're blocking the creatures you're blocking I, or, yeah. and, you know, Make sure that you understand how their combo works. Yeah. Because it's it's pretty finicky in a couple spots, but you wouldn't guess it if you've never played yeah. the deck. And this is um, a another thing. Like, your aggro deck, you're going to have to attack into their random efforts or it's in sentry to get in the four points of damage. Yeah, yeah this is this is only reasonable advice like, if, you're, if your deck has a plan that is not... Kill them. Yeah. Kill them immediately, um, right? Yeah. Um, but it does mean it, it can be very hard for them to combo off even, even in later turns. Like... Um, to set up to to actually finally set up a turn where where that happens, um, you have to be careful. And it's a big part of uh, Zoe Asol's plan is that you have a couple good ways to kill Lissandra, and you're you know you have screeching dragons, you have concerted strikes, you have uh, invoked uh, obliterates, um, and you just want to leave their other units around, pressure them with random things, or don't pressure them at all, and eventually kill them with a great beyond or an Asol. Like yeah, yeah. And and uh, to add on to the uh, board state point. It is very common that the only way that they can actually go for the kill, this happens a lot, is where you, for example, you have a full board, you have five units, right? Your watcher is at three of four. Huh. Oh, I'm just going to play my my eight mana card. Let's. I'm going to play my spectral matron, and it's not going to make anything, but it's going to make my watcher cost zero, and that's the plan, right? And in those games, you only have to beat one watcher. Yeah, you, you don't have to it. beat the you ephemeral can. one. You can hush it. You can stun it. You can vengeance it, right? Like. Yeah. Making their combo f more fragile is a big part of being able to beat the combo if your plan is slow enough that you're going to have to beat it. Yeah, absolutely. Right. The combo is beatable. You just have to plan for the combo. And the beautiful thing about this deck is that you're not going to get beat down, right? You know, the only two drop in their deck is Avaros and Sentry. Like, you're not going to die to the yeah. attack until turn eight or nine anyway. I mean, unless you're letting an unanswered flip Trundle, like, take Yeah, exactly. Trundle's the, only, Trundle's the only card that's ever going to kill you. Reasonably, yeah, right? So, like, 
It's not the old deck where there were Trendemirs and Trundles and atrocities that like plan was to cobble together yeah. 20. You can just keep a mediocre hand that won't lose to the Watcher. You you can just keep Lost Riches in your hand as as deep. You can just keep the second copy of I don't know, Lee Sin in your hand, and you're probably gonna do that anyway. But like you can keep the second Lee yeah, Sin in yeah. your hand against this deck because it's a plan against the Watcher. Like there are a lot of outs to beat the Watcher. The best plan against this deck is usually to beat the Watcher, not beat it before the Watcher with most decks. Yeah, I've found. So yeah, a lot of those mid-range decks. And this deck very succinctly beats decks who's trying to do it before the Watcher because they have just have, like we said, so many ways to influence the board yeah. with Avalanches and Blighted Refuse. And that's part of the problem is that all the decks that are trying to beat it before the Watcher suck at doing it because the rest of the deck is built to beat those because that's the, that's the best that's plan. That's why you built your deck right. like this. That's yes, why exactly. This is, like this. this is why the deck is built like this. It's built to get to turn eight and combo off. It doesn't really have a good way to win the game other than that. It's going to beat your aggro decks, right? Most of the time. So your plan to beat this deck has to resolve around beating revolve, excuse me, around beating the watcher, which is not an easy ask. But the benefit is that this deck gives you the whole game to figure out how to do it. Yeah, yeah they're not going to pressure you every the amount of times I've looked down at my hand of nine cards on turn seven and been like, eh, pass. Whatever. Yeah, like, like, it's like every whatever. single turn. I like look down at my hand, count up to if it's less than 10. It's just like pass, whatever. Like you just pass. Yeah. If, you if you're not pass, dying, you're winning. Is, yeah, you open pass like mantra. half the time with this yeah. deck like if you have the whole, basically the only thing that gets me to play a card actively as tlc is when i have 10 cards in hand and i'm gonna burn a card <laughs> like, yeah, absolutely so like yeah you have a whole you have a whole lot of time yeah. so a another part of this is that uh i very often lost this deck because i spent like a unit and a get excited like trying to kill a trundle or whatever and that just never trundle mattered. that's the that's another thing i want to talk about <laughs> trundle doesn't, doesn't matter, matter. Don't worry about Trundle. Just block it. The, the Rick and Morty meme, like, what's your purpose? He creates Ice Pillars. That's, that's what he does. <laughs> that's what he does. We would play Ice Pillar instead of Trundle if we could. Well, I don't know about that. But, okay, that's fair. Uh, we get to play other champions. Okay, this is a hypothetical. Maybe. Regardless, <laughs> like, the only reason Trundle matters is for Ice Pillar, and there's a lot of the time where I just, like, suicide my Trundle in so I can play the second Trundle so that I have two Ice Pillars. Nice, yeah. Oh, like, he, he blocks real good, too. He blocks so good. Yeah. Yeah. It, the amount of times where I like attack in with my trundle and my opponents like got him like sharp sight my three three block and then I play another trundle and then just just have it have a party because the second ice pillar is so good in your deck yeah, like yeah, do you have any idea how many times the enemy trundle has blocked has has chump blocked my gangplank oh, and I've so been many. like oh no like <laughs> i as the person swinging with gangplank was like oh man <laughs> yeah. this oh. sucks yeah, yeah. crap because yeah. i i i know i i yeah second trundle is the second trundle way better than the first in this deck yeah That's this another is another thing. reason that i i'm really not that in on catalyst veons like in the old field rush decks you're like yeah catalyst into trundle this is nuts you'd just rather play avalanche you'd just yep. rather play Blighted Ravine on four. Then Trundle is Trundle. Trundle's yeah. not a haymaker. Trundle blocks in this deck. Yeah. Right? Like people, the haymaker is Lissandra. Yeah. Like I said, that's the only card that matters, basically. Yeah. I mean, it's like Lissandra. Yeah, that's like, that's, it's like Lissandra and Entreat because it's half a Lissandra. <laughs> you yeah, know, and, and obviously the four or five body is good in plenty of matchups. You know, don't get me wrong. Um, but uh, I think that. People really overvalue Trundle from the opposing side of this deck. It's not the Trundle that in the past, you're not going to yep. die to this Trundle Honestly. attacking you. And if you are going to die to Trundle attacking you, you're probably losing you're going to know you, you're, you're going to know by then. It shouldn't be your default. Yeah, <laughs> you know, absolutely. that should um, be the exception. Another thing. So we talked about how to beat it. Talked a little bit about how to play it, but just kind of like you want to control the board and you want to make it so that you, you want to control your own board. You want to make sure your own board doesn't get huge. Like if they kill your first Lissandra and you play a second Lissandra, like those two board slots that those landmarks takes up hurt. Um, yeah, Frozen Thrall is, is actively a downside. Yeah. Um, this time. And so um, that's kind of how to, how to manage that. Uh, try to kill them in those cute turns. Uh, a huge part of playing against this is champ spell looping so that you can beat the Watcher the first time. Doesn't work with TF, which is why he's bad now. <laughs> yeah, um, the champ spell loop is very real. Yeah. Uh, as TLC, uh, I mentioned it 
briefly earlier, but you want to be really critical every game about whether or not you're supposed to play your Lissandra early or whether or not you're supposed to save your your Lissandra till like turn eight when after it's flipped. And then there's the classic controls, balancing slow and fast removal spells, trying to set up for withering whales that are good against opens and ice shards and stuff like that. Yeah, and my last piece of uh, potentially not obvious advice for this deck is that Blighted Ravine is really good at just wasting your opponent's turn. Yeah. Um, Blighted, it's fine to play Blighted Ravine and only get one or two cards and not get as much value because a lot of the time your opponent just can't really play anything. Yeah. Like, like when you, you play Blighted Ravine, they're just they're just gonna look at it and be like, "Do I want to play my units into this? They're all gonna take two. Yeah, you don't even want to play like even if you play like three, 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 four, three, four, three, and then they just like ice shard you. You're like, oh my yeah, it's a God. disaster, right? Yeah, like yeah. it's it's really bad a lot of the time. So, uh. Blighted Ravine is very often a just, you can just play Blighted Ravine as a, you don't get to take your turn this turn. Yeah. And that's good. Yeah. Like we're saying, when when the cards in your hand don't matter, when you're trying to pass, when you have 10 cards in hand, you just want to waste your opponent's entire attack token, entire turn. Yeah. It doesn't matter. You're yeah. going to win the game if you do if you can execute your combo cleanly, yeah. almost always. Yeah. Uh, the, the amount of games that you lose to your opponent playing around the watcher are not very many. And admittedly, I think it should be more because I think yeah. people don't do it very particularly well. Yeah. But, uh, you know, you should have a plan for these. It's important to keep opposing, opposing uh, champions off the board. Particularly, it's really important to, like, pull champions with the ice pillar turn. Be It's very good to usually trade your trundle for their champions. The turn where you're attacking with the watcher, you know, try to get all the champions off the board so that they can't play champ spells. Mm-hmm. Right. Stuff like that, it goes a long way. Uh, yeah. So just little marginal things, thinking about how your opponent's going to survive a watcher attack, if at all. You know, some decks just have no outs, and that's those are nice, you know? Yeah. Um, so uh, the last thing, well, one of one of them was, is flex slots and tech cards. Um, some of the cards we talked about, Catalyst Vans, don't think is great, but those flex slots are like, you know, the third Vile Feast, the third t- Kindly Tavern Keeper, third of Orison Century, yeah, I wanna, like that area, Ice I wanna, Shards, numbers. Yeah, I want to try... Yeah, it's basically just numbers. Um, don't touch the third Fading Memories. Fading Memories is so good in this deck. That okay. that card that card looks like a... That card looks weird. Play three of them, I swear. It also, like, something that you a lot of people, like, weirdly don't think about... Um, or maybe people are thinking about it more now, but it's just really good against aggro. Yeah, yeah. You, oh, that's yeah, that's a great piece. It's, of advice. it's amazing. Like fading you, memories, your opponent's stuff. Yeah, you can fading memory. Like they play their dumb, like they play their doom beast, or they play their like frenzied skitter, and you play their frenzied skitter and great. shrink their board back. Great, and so then good. Block and yeah, then, and then have a fearsome blocker. Like, yeah, that's great. Yeah, their doom beast is fading one. Their Doom Beasts are great. You can Fading Memories, your Avarosan Sentries, Kindly Tavern Keepers, another absolute all-star to Fading Memories. Fading mem- I would play four if I could. I went from one to two to three. I'm, I've never looked back. Never back. It's one of the yeah. best cards on the deck. Especially, like, Doom Beast is, like, one of the best targets, too, because it triggers the Nightfall. Like, yeah, if you're hitting so a Nightfall good. thing, Nightfall's always on because you cast Fading yeah. Memories yeah, first. Yeah, absolutely. So good. So yeah. good. Oh, and, yeah, don't be afraid to cast Fading Memories early, like, if if creatures are going to die and you think they're going to be good later. It's totally fine to just fading memories of Solari Sunforger sometimes and then, you know, play it next turn or whatever, right? Like, you, you can plan out turns in advance, it, especially because, like, you're, like, turn six and seven are usually quite bad with this deck. You don't really have a whole lot to do. So stealing your opponent's turn six and seven is often quite good. Yeah, and it can also just turn into a draw spell. Just copy your own Avaros and Sentry. It's going to die because it has ephemeral. Yep. It's, yeah. It can just replace itself. Like, this this card, so, the versatility of this card's insane. It's great. Yeah. I, I'm excited to play this card in more fair shells in the future after seeing how good it is just as a fair card. And yeah. it's, it's kind one of, like of your best combo pieces. Iterative improvement to be. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, um, cool. Um, and then some variations. I, I just want to say every time that I play against this deck, it's like, oh, I have to play around Withering Whale. Need to be at withering well this turn. And then my opponent plays Monastery of Ferrana, and I check their deck again. I'm like, oh, okay. Whew. This is the Ionia version. Yeah. Like okay. every time, sigh of relief. Yep, we win. I yeah. the Ionia version is so much. I don't worse. think I've ever lost to it. I, I haven't either. Never lost to it. I I imported it. I was like, what is this? I opened it, looked at it, and I was like, I'm gonna have to craft one Monastery of Hirana for this deck. Yeah, I'm off it. Yeah. So looking <laughs> deleted at it. it. I, I've never played a game with it, but boy, does it look so much worse than the I, SI version, so it's I like think. a similar deck, but it's playing like, you know, Nopify, Deny, a Monastery of Hirana, three Shadow Assassins, three Concussive Palms, two Denies, 
three homecomings. Like homecoming in it. Yeah. Go get it. Go get it. it. Cause it, yeah, cause it's it, uh, weird. It does the, it does the thing. Yeah. It does, it the does thing. a lot of things. I mean, look, there, there's some very obvious synergy in that deck and I don't hate it, but boy, do I just, and, and it's still got the, the three avalanche, the three blighted ravine. That's all still very important to that yeah. deck. That's all very good, but you just don't it's, get, Forbidden memories. Do you know movies. also what you know? Every time doesn't have the matron. fading memories. Sorry. Every time it doesn't I have look, spectrum matron. every time I look at that list, I'm just like, I look at each of these Ionia cards, and I'm like, man, I sure wish that was Withering Whale. Man, I sure wish that was Vengeance. Like yeah, this yeah, concussive yeah, palm is a lot worse than Vengeance usually is. So much worse yeah, than yeah, Vengeance. Totally. Even like you just don't care. Stun your thing is not at all like it, okay. It is what you care about with certain cards. But Vengeance is not here to deal with the cards that we need to stun. That's why Avalanche and exactly. Blighted Ravine are in the deck. Because presumably the cards that are attacking us are the ones we want to be stunning. I need to Vengeance Nautilus. I want to Vengeance, you know, like, I want to Vengeance the cards that I can't otherwise deal Nasus. with. Right, Nasus, Thresh, you, you know, Nautilus, Maokai. Like, these are the cards that need to be Vengeance, not Concussive Palmed. And Concussive Palmed does not deal with the problem yeah, a lot of the time. Cool. Um... That's TLC. Is there anything else crazy you want to say about yeah, it? Yeah. Anybody you got any got any last points? I think I, I said a lot about this deck. So you, you did, and we that was expected. I mean, you've played the most of it. I've played the least of it, um, and that's fine. But I just I'm glad that the numbers align with my <laughs> you view. Feel vindicated. <laughs> yeah. I just I just like it. Just feels like this is just a squeeze on the meta coming from this this side from this deck absolutely it's mostly this deck i think it's I think almost entirely this it's, deck. yeah this deck yeah. is the problem um there's just a certain inevitable it has too much inevitability is and it's just so good against aggro for a deck with that much inevitability Oof. yeah it's yeah rough. normally normally the deck that says if i survive to turn 10 i win 95 percent of the time usually that deck's weakness is aggro yeah. And that is the exact opposite of what is true for this deck. Which is interesting because even in this game, the mid range control decks often have trouble against aggro because how easy it is to rebuild after something like a runation, right? Like yeah. even if they leave you with like two or three mana, you can play like six power and then attack them with it. Yep. Um, and it just isn't true for this deck. Blighted Ravine is, blighted ravine blighted is, ravine is the yeah. biggest reason why that isn't true against this deck, I think. And yeah, like I, I've said before, I'll say it again boy is the like you don't really get to play units for the rest of this turn effect on that card so good. so good and speaking of infinite two health units um time to talk about some zoe Asel. yeah so this is the new Hotness. up and comer this is all over the master's ladder right now at least at the time we're recording this yeah like five uh, of the top ten or something it's like, i it's like four i like opened up the leaderboard yesterday and i was like what are people playing? what are people playing you know the meta has been out for a while first deck is a soul pile pile all right import it what is this oh zoe a soul great I, I remember this deck i like this deck next deck zoe a soul oh wow is it really next deck zoe a soul I, I looked at the top four decks and it was three zoe a soul a soul one tf fizz uh-huh and then the whole another month. five zoe a soul straight oh my with Lord. the time i looked at it and yeah. i was like oh my god what happened overnight yeah this is a really great example of how fast decks spread because like you know, that isn't their most played deck recently. It's the deck they played most recently. And so everyone sees it and tries it. And then it looks like the entire Master's Ladder is this deck. Yeah. And like, and obviously I'm part of the problem. I snap imported it and started playing it. Yeah. Right? And, and like, by the time, by the time it, you know, 10 hours later when I looked at it, it bounced back a bit and people were playing other decks and decks that were good against it. But um, the deck is very good. So this deck looks like um, pretty classic Tarkon patch package of three Spacey Sketchers, three Zoe's. Um, Two Mountain Goats. Uh, we're playing three Dragon Guard Lieutenant, two sh three Sharp Sight, three Single Combat, two Hush, three Slurry Priestess, three The Fangs, two three Concerted Strikes, three Screeching Dragons, two Star Shapings, three Eclipse Dragons, a Judgment, and three Asols. Okay. Also, real quick, that that one Judgment. Oh yeah. So so good won me a couple games I, I don't have the judgment in my list yeah that's it, oh a, put it in they cut, a star, put it in. they cut a star shaping for judgment and it's really really good it's really um, good okay yeah you cast that card way sooner than you think Yo, yeah that that I'm, five, I'm really five, baby because star shaping is like pretty clunky and has always not been that good but is feels like a necessary <laughs> evil in these decks <laughs> which is funny because the amount of hate it gets on twitter everyone's like we need to nerf star shaping it's no, ridiculous i do not think star shaping has ever been the problem people. in in <laughs> Star shaping has never been the problem in these decks. I think that star shaping is probably the worst card in these decks. 
and you just, you just do not need a five mana spell that gets you a seven drop in this deck, right? It, like, I mean, it's you nice to keep really you spend the mana. It, it's pretty important. You're but... really only playing it for the heal five, right? Yeah, it's like, like you okay. have to play it for the heal five because you do need it. Yeah. And the amount of times that I cast the seven mana plus invoke thing that I get off my star shaping is probably like 25%. Yeah. Like it's really just not what you want to be doing in this deck. Anyway, in there, this are, deck. there are some yeah. decks that rely on that for late game, like absolutely old, old TF. Yeah, my, my version uh, does not have a judgment, uh, but it does have the third copy of mountain goat. And uh, that's, I, I, I was I, astounded that the deck isn't playing three. Mountain I was, goats. I was about to say that like, I cannot even imagine cutting a mountain goat from this deck it's one of the best cards in the deck i think okay um you like it more than dragon guard lieutenant i'm playing three of both okay. um but i do like it more than dragon guard lieutenant also like dragon guard lieutenant is just not on sometimes sometimes it's just a two mana three two and that sucks when was the last time you drew a mountain goat and we're like yeah Damn. This, yeah. this sucks That's right like, it's always Never. good and yeah. and with the three spacey sketchers it's really important to have the gems to be able to ditch to spacey sketchers yeah, so sense. i i I'm gonna advocate for three mountain goat on that. Also heals up your uh, random challengers. Like if you if once you, you block, yeah, it's just good. The yeah. gems, are, the gems are good. Uh, the, also, the two mana three two is really important. Like one mana, give your thing the ability to block fearsomes. Ooh, really real good. Nice. Yeah, real nice. Good. Yeah. There's a lot. Of, there's a lot of. I mean, we've we've talked about how good mountain goat is for ever it's so good but yeah. i i just can't imagine cutting it but anyway let's let's keep going on that that's the deck yeah so it, it's interesting i always laugh when i see this because it's the one mana champion and the 10 mana champion it's, it's like it the, sounds so janky yeah it's right like split and, it's and, like, huh, and it turns out know what it's trying to do no it doesn't i, I actually think that that this deck doesn't know what it's trying to do, which turns out is brilliant right now yeah. because you've got half your deck that's going to try to beat aggro and you got half your deck worth of stuff that can beat TLC and, Aesol and Eclipse Dragon and Aesol and Eclipse Dragon. And you're going to go over the top of the lease index. You're going to go over the top of the deep decks. You're going to go over the top of TLC if you can, if you can do it yeah. eventually. Right. Um, and then you have the other half of your deck, which is like, honestly, it feels like a hedge yeah. <laughs> to be honest, like uh, where you're like, I, I, I'm going to try not to get obliterated by aggro and it comes together in a well functional package. Yeah. Yeah. Like most of your draws are functional. Um, this deck does suffer from the occasional seven drop itis where, you know, you ship your hand and your, your hand comes back with like screeching dragon, Aurelian soul, eclipse dragon, eclipse dragon, or something like that. And you're like, I lose immediately, but it's amazing how far a single Zoe can go to mitigate those draws. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I think that something that like part of the reason this deck is so, uh, apparently good right now. I, I've been seeing it a lot very recently. Um, oh, it is very new. <laughs> yeah, yeah, when it's we're very recording new. This, but yeah. um, it just sort of, like you said, it sort of does everything pr like reasonably well. Like also, concerted strike. Just the card so good right now, so hot right now. Yeah, it's actually like um, one Cards of messed up. One of the Lisa? things. Yeah, it's it, that's the, kill Jarvan. It kills. It kills barriers. Yeah, it does. And that's a very, very in relevant thing. This deck thing. kills Nautilus is because you have 10 drops with Spell Shield. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and so, like, it's just, yeah, yeah, very good. Yeah, so... A robust low curve, very good cards in the mid game, um, and then a Cliff Dragon into Aesol. Yeah, so I think we should talk about uh, a couple tips for, for how to play with the deck. Yeah. Uh, so... You know, like we said, this deck's pretty new, so I'm not gonna... You know, I've, I've probably got... 50 or 60, if not more, games on TLC. So I feel pretty comfortable saying the things I was saying about TLC. This deck, I probably only have like 25, right? I've played it a lot in past metas. Um, just, I just really, I don't know. I talked a little bit before about how I love the like grindy Targon Invoke Mirrors and I just love that style of deck. So I've played a lot of Zoe Soul in my day. I just, I usually Back tend when to- it was run in the Grand Plaza. Yeah, I usually tend to find a reason to put it in put it in my lineup or, or play it on ladder some just because I really like the deck. So, so here's a couple things. Like I said, one Zoe goes so such a long way to, to deal with the like mana curve problems. It's a way to use like the first six mana that you have. Yeah, it's great. And yeah. Zoe, unlike let's take Loe, Zoe Lee, for example, Zoe in this deck is really just an early game, like curve filler. Uh, she's a threat that's going to generate you value. And she's there as the plan for, because your early game sucks, basically, basically, like it's not that good. Your whole early game is like mountain coats and sharp sights, and I don't know, you just oh. aren't going to draw it sometimes. Which is, you know, it's a plan, but it's not a good early game or anything. Zoe's really good at that, and yeah. your opponent's going to kill Zoe, 
and that's fine. She doesn't need to take over the game because you have a much better plan to win the game yeah. than a lot of the others. It's also really hard to flip when you're playing like five mana units instead of a bunch of like like resonating strike the the like Lee champ spells and stuff. Yeah, it's not like she never flips, but it's far less common. Yeah, yeah. Um, I flip a soul more off quick more quickly than I flipped Zoe. Like I played an a soul that was at the twenty five power, and it just like was the ninth card for Zoe. <laughs> I had the Zoe and play all game. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, I was going to say, so one thing that uh, is really interesting about this deck is, I don't know, really quickly, what do you guys think is, like, Zoe's, what are you scared of when you play your Zoe? Like, what do you think is killing Zoe most of the time? The two biggest sources of, like, Zoe's demise. The Zoe downfalls. I think that uh, the number one killer of zoe's is zoe uh in my, in my experience oh yeah <laughs> i would have to say there's a there's a lot of zoe on zoe uh so brutality actually, yeah uh <laughs> <laughs> that almost went okay. anyway. there's a lot there's a lot of there's a lot of zoe violence uh that goes along that goes on uh, after yeah. that what is it like vile feast yeah vile feast Maybe yeah okay yeah. get i uh what i was angling for I there was, like, was not good um, right now parlay's not good right now was uh it was a creature that's gonna like i was more angling towards Maybe challenger um, oh yes sharp a lot of a lot of challengers yeah up. yeah yeah so i was angling towards like mystic shot and fleet feather tracker were the two cards that came up in my mind um yeah. foul feast is a very good example as well sharp sight's also a really great example basically uh something challenging slash blocking it and a, a random removal spell just shooting it because yep. she is a one one she Absolutely. will die. she dies to everything she dies to actually Hopefully, everything. usually she gets in a card yeah anyway it's her card yeah so some this deck uh, in the past like so zoe zoe lee is good at protecting zoe from removal spells yep um a lot less good at protecting her from units absolutely uh because usually those units are just big enough to eat her pretty much your only out is like casting her star shaping and hitting crescent strike or equinox most of yeah, the time like it's really hard to make your one one survive combats with your combat tricks in zoe lee like she's just too tiny yep you can't grow her fast enough like you have to you have to get those games where you like zenith blade her twice and then like get a sun blessed vigor or just yeah it's nonsense nonsense basically. yeah exactly so that deck can protect her from like mystic shot and stuff but is much worse at protecting her from like challengers or sharp sight yeah. blockers um there are other decks that swing in the opposite direction they have things they have creatures that can like sort of screen for and protect her zoe asel has a tendency to be able to do both very well she has um creatures that can challenge things out of her way she has uh you know just other things on board that can yeah. sort of get in that are higher priority to block that help her yeah. get through yeah. and the removal spells that kill the things that are killing her accompany those creatures very well because demacia yeah um the demacia part of this deck is huge at covering some major weaknesses of targon yeah because it it has removal and the the same reason region has buff spells to save zoe at the same time yeah. from mystic shot yeah and your own sharp sights are insane uh single combat's so good on like eclipse dragon turns like it's just really really insane. so yeah. so here's the real the real thing with this deck i think and the real power in this deck is the leveraging your two mana support spells with your threats. And I'm yep. mostly I'm going to take Screeching Dragon as my example card because I think it's the best one at it. So Screeching Dragon, the turns where you really win the game with this this deck, in my experience, are like turn five, six, seven, where you're playing a Screeching Dragon and then you have like Sharp Sight up. Or single combat right like screeching dragon single combat is an old school fiora shen like all-star like anybody yeah. anybody who's played those decks is already knows how good it is it's just as good if not better in this deck um you've got a lot of really good sharp sight turns that you can do on the middle turns like basically most decks are going to be able to beat the first big threat yeah when you protect the first big threat the first time it makes most decks panic a little and then they, they're going to have to go a little out of their way to deal with it, right? Like, when your opponent plays a Screeching Dragon, you, you got to do something. You can't just let it eat your two best creatures and then move on. You're probably going to lose if that happens, right? So you do something, right? That something doesn't work. It got sharp-sided. Well, crap. Now the dragon ate my thing. It effectively healed two, right? Yeah. Like, now now I have to deal with this 6-3, okay? 
So let's, you know, we we put our medium creature, you know, they, they block with their Screeching Dragon, right? Our opponent got my best creature, a medium creature, and then they traded like a sharp, sharp sight for a single combat or something, right? Like, and then it's like, usually your opponent has to has to stretch to get there. And then when you play the second one, it is impossible to deal with. Like, how on earth do you deal with the 7-7 seven, seven after that on turn 7? And they often have spell shield and just yeah, like and trying dear, to like remove that spell can shield you and even kill in, yeah, the destroyer just, or whatever. Yeah. It's just so hard to deal with this this deck's threats coupled with the two mana interaction spells. The fact that Sharp Sight and Single Combat are both two mana is huge in this deck. And yeah. if you don't kill them in one clean hit. You know, Fury. The Fury. Yeah, it's brutal. they just They just get bigger and more threatening. Like, yeah. If Absolutely. you if they if they get out of range of your kill or whatever you're killing them with by one, they're suddenly they're not just like a ping away from dead. They're like very alive. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um. um so let's go into. I think we should go into how to beat it. How to beat it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I want to say one last thing about about Please? like playing it. Um. You you have a really versatile uh, invoke package. Spacey Sketcher, Zoe, and the Fangs all look at evokes three or less, and then of course. Uh, you have Solari, Priestess, Priestess, Solari Priestess and Star Shaping. Yeah, Star Shaping and Asol Asol. to get the other the, the big ones. So you, so you kind of hit the whole spectrum. So there's a ton. Deck has a ton of ways to invoke Moon Silvers for tempo. That one doesn't happen a ton. But uh I actually Serpents. think that this particular variant is like the best Moon Silver deck I've ever seen. Yeah. Even yeah. better than Lee Zoe was. I, I love I love annihilating people with moon silver single combat or moon silver sharp sight when you have like one or just mana. like moon silver like a uh, turn four screeching dragon is messed up yeah, yeah it's absolutely messed yeah, up absolutely. how hard you get people with the turn four screeching dragon sometimes turn four you just pass whatever i got nothing going on they're like looking around the coast is clear i'll play my illusion boom four mana screeching dragon right it's over the game yeah, ends yeah. on the spot uh -huh. i won like three games with that today yeah. it was sick yeah serpents too very important for tempo um, I don't take the one, the charger, the dog, or the three, tri three, trickster, three, three, trickster yeah. uh, as much. Um, and I, I find myself taking like backup equinoxes a lot. They've been really, really equinox good is so good against like random sparkle flies at least Zoe, like um, random some creatures. It, 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 it deals with the water. The for secret, mana. You just have the to secret it. of equinox is that it's great in every matchup. Yeah, there's yeah, always targets for that card. Yeah. It's oh, basically never a dead. Um, and and getting to look a lot of looks at that card is a big part of this, and getting like really good high tempo turns. Yeah. Um. So yeah, let's talk about playing against it. So, the first and most important thing when you're playing against it is to have a plan for Zoe. Yeah. So and that's every Zoe deck, right? Starts on turn one. If your this opponent has Zoe on so. one, this deck is a little worse at leveraging out Zoe. Yeah. So that's that's actually where I'm going to go with this, and that's that like. You know, you have this perennial Zoe problem, right? Boom, we got it. Got to deal with Zoe. It's ingrained in most of us at this point. Um, it's actually not that bad in this deck. It's not that threatening. It gives them something to do with their mana on early turns. That's the most threatening part of the of Zoe is that it gives them things to do. So obviously, it's important to be able to have a plan to beat Zoe. But you can let Zoe hit you twice yeah. in this yeah. deck. It's actually not the end of the world most of the time. I've found. Yeah, I she's usually the the scary part about Zoe on turn one hitting you and getting her thing is you got to deal with her fairly soon because the decks that are doing that in the past have usually flipped her. Yeah, they could flip her on like turn five. Yeah, that's exactly. Not... And that's that's pretty scary. Like you can't, you know, once she flips, it's it that's it. Like she gets her um, effect for the rest of the game, whether she's in play or not. And it's is... really hard to beat. Exactly. But this deck just doesn't flip her fast enough. Doesn't flip her fast enough. And when she does flip, it's really not usually as bad as it was in the other decks. I mean, obviously, it's still insane and it's really good. But a lot of the time, if they flipped a Zoe and then play a Destroyer, like, where are you going to win that game anyway? <laughs> like, let's be honest here. You weren't going to win that game anyway, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so uh, that that's my first piece of advice. Uh, my next piece of advice is to try to punish them for having expensive cards. The, this deck is going to play one, maybe two spells a turn for most of the game. That's pretty much it, right? You have to bank, like, you yeah. have one, two, three, four drops, so you, like, have to bank spell mana at some point, or you're never going to play your single combat to sharp sights. And so Correct. Like, so, like, this deck's going to play one spell a turn, 
two at most really like like there's really not very often where you're playing more than two spells a turn in this deck and if you are they're like mountain goats sharp sight sharp sight single combat stuff like that you know no, but like absolutely. that doesn't happen that much so go wide go wide it's it's not a perfect strategy because the screeching dragon screeching dragon in particular is the one that puts a wrench in this but like screeching dragon has fury screeching dragon i think is the best card in their deck maybe you guys disagree um, but i think it's probably screeching dragon and like specifically because it's the best card at dealing with this go wide plan and when you're only playing one card a turn even if your thing's a seven mana seven seven with fury into an eight mana irelian soul you're just gonna die to a board of three threes right you just can't block them all yeah i had a game where um so uh, there's a there's a shivana variant that plays some copies of shivana sometimes i've seen some people do just shivana a so i think that's wrong i think they should still play some amount of zoe i don't know how much but anyway someone went um Turn two, Dragon Guard Lieutenant. Uh, turn three, I like. They pass with the attack token, so they're just like three, three open man, and they just click pass. I'm like, oh, that's kind of weird. I was on pirates, and I just go like, thing, thing. I think I just played misfortune, and then he emoted Jinx emote like three times, and then he goes <laughs> Dragon Chow, Dragon Chow, Dragon Chow, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just like, wait, I'm just. He has Shivana, right? Like, I just, like, my next thought is, like, is he's going to play a Shivana and just eat three Dragon Chows, draw three cards, make an 8-8 eight, eight or something. Flip. And, and she insta-flips. Yeah, she insta-flips. So and he did that. And then I just killed him. Yeah. yeah. Oh, because as it turns out, a one giant Shivana and let's be clear, he swung immediately or no, he swung the turn after. And he ate like six of my units with this Shivana because it makes the strafing strike every turn. Oh yeah, he yeah. just Riddle. ate all of my board all the time, and I just killed yeah. him. Yeah, um, this deck is shockingly bad at actually winning the game. Yes, yeah, very bad. It's this is not like that Watcher deck where they're just gonna be like, "Oop, you're dead through its protection." You like it's very good at surviving. Very good at doing mid range things, ending up up cards, all of that stuff, all that it's nice stuff. So much value, but it's really like you know, Eclipse Dragon is just not really going to kill that many opponents. Like it's never going to kill anyone. One, they just throw one ones in front of it forever. Same with Aurelian Soul. Honestly, yeah. Aurelian Soul doesn't kill anyone, right? Yeah. Like you, I mean, you you lose to Aurelian Soul sometimes, but they it's, flip it usually. Yeah, but it's not really going to attack you to death very often, and if it is, it's going to be like partnered with a couple dragon guard lieutenants and a screeching dragon to like pull all your small stuff out of the way so you can get in for 10 or whatever yeah. um destroyer big culprit great most, beyond even most, great yeah, beyond even gets i was blocked. gonna say most of the time i win the game with this deck with like the immortal fire or the great beyond or like destroyer the destroyer like like most of the time the elusive invoke threats are how you win the game yeah. which uh, yep. is worth noting because you know those are really only going to hit you in increments of like 10 at a time right yeah. so like keeping it, it's kind of interesting uh because your life totals kind of have like gauges or like like there's like tiers of your life total when you're playing against this deck i think yeah. there's the it needs you need more than one big creature to hit me life total there's the you need one big cre you need like i'm going to live through exactly one big creature like and then i said this poorly if you're if you're like between 10 and 20, right? Your life totals, it doesn't really matter where you're at between 10 and 20 because you're going to you're going to survive one big hit and you're not going to survive the second. If you're less than 10, it matters a lot because like that's that's yeah, about that the threshold where two celestial pings or whatever is going to kill where, you. Where the immortifiers or the destroyer or whatever, the great beyond are just going to kill you with one attack. Yeah. I was um, going to say um the the life total you should be worried about is I in my experience you don't want to go below 13 or 14 usually every time i've been i've had so many games where i play you can die to like some sharp sights yeah and stuff no, like that it's or, it's actually not that i i every time a lot of the games i've played against this deck i've been like winning 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 like i'm just like i'm sitting here at like a pretty high life total i'm fine I'm never gonna lose and they just play one immortal fire and it has 15 power yeah, yeah. oh <laughs> yeah that does happen that happens, a, huge. happens yeah. to me a lot especially I'm just like 
because of all those cheap and the cheap ways to invoke that we were talking about that's just so many celestial cards. yeah you don't really think about it but you're like wait a second they did actually just like play like two serpents a moon silver like and it is worth noting that 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 like so that's a good point that 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 bar of the like where am i safe bar absolutely changes based on how many like celestial cards your opponent has played so it's good to keep a running tally because like it doesn't feel like you absolutely have to block the damage that's putting you from 15 to 13 or whatever, like it does when you're going from like six to four against spiders, right? But that actually is like about the threshold. The difference is that this deck's like, this deck tricks you into thinking that it's not going to kill you with your life total. And this deck's shockingly good at playing some big, dumb, elusive thing and like, killing you out of nowhere, yeah. right? And so do remember that your life total matters in this matchup, actually. Yeah. like. Um, so there's a lot of about playing this deck, a lot of really matchup dependent things for uh, what you should invoke when and where. Um, and it's really matchup dependent and hard to explain. But in general, my heuristic for the big ones is that Destroyer and Great Beyond are the best. The spell shield is really good to not get hushed or equinoxed. Absolutely. Um, because the Immortal Fire and the, the giant one, the Scourge, are really vulnerable to it. I think the Scourge is actually easily the worst one. Scourge is the worst no, one by far, I think. Like, even if it costs less, it would still be because it's vengeance and the, all of the other ones, like, live through a vengeance or yep, whatever. I agree. Um, uh, then, uh, you know, like we said, Equinox, very good. You can find really great spots for Moon Silver Serpent, classic, um, to be able to just uh, affect the board. I find myself taking the Messenger, like, a little more than I'd think just because, like, it helps you double spell. Um, and then in the middle, uh, the, the clear standout is golden sisters. I do not take the traveler a lot. Um, and I, I, I actually was going to say that I, I've actually taken the traveler a good bit lately. Oh, interesting. Uh, the deck doesn't have that many four drops. And a lot of the time I just curve slurry priestess into TRA the traveler. Cause I don't have a four drop. Yeah, that makes sense. But you, you know, you, I don't recommend it. It's not like the traveler is really what this deck needs. You do not need four mana, three fours that, that spin the wheel again in this deck. You do need things to do with your mana. And if, the traveler happens to be the only thing you can do with your mana. That's pretty good. Yeah. Um, but I've liked golden sister a lot. Um, yeah, that's the best one by far. Yeah. Um, and then the meteor shower quite good. Um, it's a, it's a way to deal with units without yourself having units. Cause you, you know, concerted yeah. strike hush and a single combat all need your units to interact with theirs usually in combat or to be bigger than theirs, uh, to actually, um, do kill something your opponent's meaningful. units or challengers. Once again, combat, yeah. you need units in play. Um, uh, so that's a thing to note about this deck. Like, for example, this would be a lot been a lot more relevant three weeks ago, but your Twisted Fate is usually safe against this deck if they don't have a unit. Yep. It's always safe, in fact. Absolutely. Unless they've invoked a Meteor Shower. Um, let's see. Oh, and my, my last piece of advice for playing against this deck is that they're actually not as good as healing as it might seem. Yeah. There's no guiding touches in this deck, right? Uh, a lot of people are shaving star shapings. It's just two sharps. Sh Two star, star shaping, shaping and three the fangs. I've right? seen I've seen a decent amount of people running Solari Sunforger, and yeah. I've seen that's a card that I want to talk about. Is that like that's actually a card that I have in my uh, Zoe Asol deck, and it's been an all star. Yeah. But uh, so if if they don't, but that's uncommon. That's uncommon. I think at this point. So I think that most lists don't have Solari Sunforger in them. And mm -hmm. even if even if that's not necessarily true anymore, and, and maybe I'm just totally wrong, like there still isn't that much healing, right? Like you can burn them out. The damage does matter. They're not actually as good at healing as many Targon decks yeah. are. They're great at putting out big blockers. Yeah. And eventually they're going to stabilize the board. So don't try to fight them stabilizing the board, basically. Like you can't you can't win, basically. Yeah. If, you're, you can, if your plan you can, is try to win the win the board, you're gonna lose. You can't beat that. I don't think yeah. there's a single deck in the meta that's going to win the fight for the board on turns six through nine yeah. as as well as this deck will. So that can't be your plan, I don't think. You need you need to have a plan that attacks them earlier. You need to have a plan that goes around it. You need to have a plan that goes wider. Deep Some of the can time test the board. Yeah, deep, I think, is actually the only deck that can, specifically because they also have power turns that are like six, huge, seven, eight, huge nine. Boys. Yeah. Right. But you know, and deep's maybe even a little better at it around then. So may, maybe I take that back and deep can do it. But uh other than that, if you aren't playing deep, I can't really imagine you have for being able to win a board fight. So on a lot of those deck. notes, I want to talk about some flex slots and specifically um, kind of tie this all together. Uh, the Shavana Acehole deck that I've seen around. Um, this deck, like Hugh said, is playing three Dragon Chows uh, over three Zoe's. That's a downgrade. <laughs> <laughs> the full three Mountain Goats, three Star Plate, three Single Combats, two, three Dragon's Clutch, um, three Shavana, and three Solari Sunforger. Um, 
taking uh, some of the other uh, mid rangey slots. Uh, oh, they're not playing. Um, they're not playing the fangs. No, they are playing, oh, the they fangs. Are playing the fangs. So they're playing twelve four drops, but they aren't playing the uh, three drop that invokes if it has daybreak. Yeah, and no, Priestess. Priestess. yeah, and no uh, spacey sketchers. I presume. Oh, and they're not playing spacey sketchers. Yeah, and they're kind of cutting those for Shivana, Sunforger, Dragon Clutch, and then everything else is basically the same. So importantly here. This deck has some nice things going for it. Um, it's a little beefier earlier with Sunforger and Shivana, like instead of being like five, instead six, of being seven, the fangs, yeah, yeah, it's like four, five, six often. Yep. Um, well, this not no six drops in either of these. It mostly decks, just has good four drops. Them. Yeah. Um, and then you can like play that on turn six with backup, which is pretty good. Uh, Shivana's decent. Um, Dragon's Clutch like slams the mirror, being really able to good. draw. Um, your Aesol's a lot more consistently and go over the top with more likely to have Eclipse Dragon into Aesol. And don't forget about that Dragon's get plus one, plus one mode yeah. on that card. That matters a lot. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and um, the other thing is that uh, it's not a Zoe deck, which is upside when you're trying to put it into a lineup. Yeah, it's very it's very good that it's not a Zoe deck. This deck can be played with Lee Sin Zoe in a tournament lineup. And like TLC. And then like look at that lineup. feels very good. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I would... I would recommend the Zoe version for laddering. I think the Zoe version is more efficient and a little bit better. Yeah. But I do recommend, I highly recommend trying the Shivana Aesol variant, uh, specifically because it's probably going to be more prevalent as a tournament deck, and it might just be a better tournament deck anyway. So Yeah, yeah. Um, cool. Uh, I think that brings us pretty close to a wrap on the new hot Zoe Aesol. Do you guys have anything you want to add to the end of it? Any t random tips or tricks you've noticed? Oh, I mentioned Solari Sunforger. That's a that's a card that I have in my Zoe Aesol list that's been really, very good for me. Uh, so feel free to try that out at home. Let me know if you guys think it's good. I think it's, I haven't seen a whole lot of it. All right. Cool. Well, I guess that that is the end of that, which means it is time for the question of the week. Oh, yeah. uh, moving into our listener questions, our question of the week this week comes from Dr. Beeves in the Discord. They ask, what is your comfort card? The card you draw and you think, everything's going to be all right. <laughs> My personal one is Noxian Fervor. I feel like if I have that card, there's no way I can lose. All right, who, who wants to go first? I can go first if you want. Yeah, all right, I'll yeah, fire away. It. All right, my answer is Zoe. And that's a cheap answer. It's, it is, I also it is think that's a cheap. a cheap answer. Well, can it not be a champion? I, I mean, it can be, but like, who doesn't feel like they're the king of the world when they got turn one Zoe? Okay, well, okay, I get. I mean, exactly. Isn't that isn't that the point of the question? That's fair. That's fair. When okay, when I have Zoe on turn one, I feel like I can't lose. That's 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 at home. That's comfort for me. I don't know. There's a few. There's definitely some other ones like. Oh, come back to me. I'll have Wisdom another fate. one at the end. Oh. Yeah, you guys uh, go. Uh, oh, for me, I really um, think my answer is, I didn't think this would be my answer because I like, in my head, I don't like Demacia very much, but I've played a lot of Demacia, like especially like Fiora Shen, uh, Shen Jarvan. And so I think the answer is Sharp Sight. It's just so good, so good at winning particular interactions. It like beats Hush a lot of the time. If you cast it after, it, like wins a challenger war. A lot of the times you're like, well, I can make this attack because I'm good and I have because because they're trading and I have sharp sight. So if they have sharp sight, we're just trading still. Yep. Um, and so it just feels like a lot less can go wrong when you have that card in your hand. Yeah. So I have kind of um, two answers uh, because there's there's uh, certain decks that's very different. in. so in aggro decks, it's almost always for me. Also, Noxian Fervor, interestingly enough, yeah. I love that as a card. really good choice. Yeah, so it's much. just it, it's so powerful. Like. The amount of versatility, like the amount of times it like denies healing. And yeah, damage that's the that's age. one of the big things. Like the the dealing three damage to your own creature to deal three damage to something else is often upside, like yeah. way more than it should be. Like blocking Radiant Guardian or the Fangs, and then eating your creature that would have had damage dealt to it to yeah. you know shoot them, or better yet, when they block with their life steal unit, and you're yeah. like, er, boom, and then you like yoink the healing away, and they were like counting on that like healing now. to live it's like a six point life swing a lot of yeah time. it's huge and that's just one of the card i i've just in i feel very comfortable using it. i feel like i'm very good at using it yeah um the only other card that comes close to that in like an aggro deck for me is like decimate like that also is like a very like nice card to have you're like 
their life total is way less than they oh, think. See, it is. I never want to draw that card until they're at four. And then I want to rip it. Oh, but I, man, I hate having. That I card have. In my I hands. have kept that card in opening hands. Oh, before. No, oh, Lord. I can honestly say I've never done that. And it, I think, has been right. Maybe by the numbers, it's just always wrong. But God damn, has it felt good so often. <laughs> but in um, the other answer I was going to give is uh, in in anything that's not aggro, pretty much, and anything that's even vaguely more mid rangey is screeching dragon. God damn it, <laughs> that was my answer. <laughs> you already Scree- answered, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I unironically think my literal top three were going to be Zoe, Sharp Sight, Screeching Dragon. Yeah. Those are all like which, Sharp Sight and Screeching Dragon are just so like yeah. They happen to all be in the Zoe Asol deck, which which is explaining. I, I mentioned that I played I've played this archetype a lot, uh-huh. and so this is probably starting to explain why. But I like, unironically, I love yeah, this because sh- like sharp sight is a good answer because like it's just you can't you feel like you can't lose combat. Feel like you can't lose combat. Yeah, yeah. and it's like old, it used to be pale, pale or pale cascade. It used to be pale cascade or, and hush, and yeah, now yep. they suck. Yeah, well, <laughs> hush is fine. Hush is fine. Um, but yeah, and then Screeching Dragon, you also feel like you can't lose combat because the four or five it's challenge. Huge, it's huge, it's so big. You yeah. play Screeching Dragon, and you're like, I wonder if I'm gonna get three or four cards this time. Yeah, <laughs> like, 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 I saw that card, and I was like, that card's Are we sure up. about this? Yeah, yeah. Screeching Dragon is messed up. It does bad things to good people, <laughs> <laughs> and good things for good people, and great things for good people. <laughs> All right, our next question comes from Twilight. They ask, How do you learn new decks? I noticed that I climbed just recently only when one of the decks that I spent time learning from previous metas became good again. Case in point, as Draven. Given how the LOR meta shifts every month or two, that's even generous. This is not a good principle for aspiring to break through high ranks. So, how do you become adaptable and learn, even find, new decks that you can commit to climbing with? My best answer to that is just finding very consistent patterns um among cross decks yeah cross decks uh because even though like um aggro decks can be very diverse there are certain like very core uh traits principles yeah. principles gameplay lines yeah that are like you know if you're if you're the go wide aggro deck it doesn't matter too much if you're discard or spiders like there's certain parts of both of those decks that are just m- almost entirely the same Obviously, some parts of the decks are completely different, and there are things you need to know that are very specific to each of them, but there are certain core parts that are very interchangeable, and if you draw parallels between certain decks that you've seen before, like, like I don't know, like any any Shivana deck, really, every every sh- single Shivana yeah, deck. in 12 cards or whatever. Exactly. Yeah. There's, there's, a, there's a core package associated with Shivana that has pretty much always been the same across every iteration of every deck she's ever been in. Um, I don't know, like Screeching Dragon's part of it. Yeah, right? absolutely. Like Sharp Sight's part of it. Yeah, Dragon single combat. Yeah, all that. Probably that. Yeah. Single combat. Like there's certain like things that are just the same across all these types of decks. And if you start to notice these patterns and see them emerge, you'll get much more comfortable with different decks much quicker because you'll know exactly, like you'll go into the, the deck uh, you're going to a game with the deck and think to yourself, okay, like a third of this list, I know exactly what it does and exactly how they play with the other cards in a third of the list. Like, and then you'll have to learn the other two thirds, but you know, that's a lot less that you have to learn. Absolutely. Um, big thing for me, uh, not everyone has the the ability to do this, but when you want to pick up a deck, just like play three games against a challenger friend, play three games because the you make so many mistakes the first like three to five games that you play a deck you're like oh and you kind of realize how it works and how it goes um and it can be huge to be able to play that in like a safe environment where you're not losing lp getting upset about it caring too much about winning and less about learning yeah um yeah that's great yeah so i was i was gonna say there's pretty much no substitute for playing the deck i think and that's that's not a great answer but specifically when you're playing a new deck and you're learning a new deck it's really important to like you just should accept anytime you pick up a new deck that you're going to lose 100 LP. You should you should accept it. And every time you don't, great score. Yeah, this deck's great. <laughs> you should probably yeah. accept that you're probably going to mess up and you're going to learn a lot, but that's okay. You're going to lose 100 LP, but you're going to learn a lot. 
I don't think there's really a great substitute for playing, but I was going to say the second best option, actually, I think the second best option is your, your thing, right? Like, you know, playing the, or even the best option. So you don't lose the hundred LP, right? Play games against your friends. If you can't do that, I love just watching people play the deck. There's a oh, lot yeah. of content creators, uh, us included. Whoop, whoop. Yeah, there's a lot of streams. There's a lot of YouTube videos. You can usually find someone playing the deck that you want to play at any given time on Twitch, uh -huh. assuming it's anything even close to the meta, right? Like if, if you just go to the Legends of Runeterra page and look look at the, the twitch.tv slash Legends of Runeterra and just browse, like you're going to find somebody that's playing the deck that you want to learn. And you can watch them play for five or six games and you'll they'll talk about the deck. A lot of times they'll be happy to answer questions, you yeah. know, like so I think that watching people play is is an easy second best to playing the games yourself and it doesn't put your LP on the line while you're yeah. doing it. Yeah. So it's pretty absolutely. nice, I think it, tend, it and for that reason tends to be my go to. I yeah, will absolutely. Add, right. Like I don't think I'm going to learn quite as much as fast, but probably going to lose a little yeah. less LP. So, so like when you break into a new tier, like, you know, you just hit diamond four you're like sweet i can learn this deck that i've been wanting to learn oh yeah that's another great one is abuse the zero lp threshold right yeah, like yeah. you know or if just you got into masters a lot of people play jank they like make it to masters and then like low ladder is so many less meta decks than than top of diamond is all meta decks and bottom of masters is no just meta jank, decks. Pets. Just jank just far as the and the see. best feeling is when you're in high diamond and you queue into that like Siver Timo deck. I can't tell and you. You just throw a party. How You're many like, yes! times? The zero LP Masters player with Siver Timo. Thank God. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I've been queuing as like D2 40 LP, like into like 180 LP Masters players. Like it's nonsense. Like why am I playing against these people? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, I got annihilated by BBG. We had like 800 LP when I was in Diamond 2. You can't two. match based on LP at no, that point because no. he has like. 10 times as many LP no, as it, the and there's <laughs> it's, it's totally fine because like this is how the matchmaking systems how every matchmaking system has to work at a high enough level because there just aren't enough players yeah as you get to the top of the ladder right and so it's totally fine you're going to queue into masters players but it also means you're going to queue into masters players with zero LP when you're yeah. a diamond and those are the best so I will say <laughs> that the bottom of master ma like the very bottom of masters is the single most fun place in the in the ladder period <laughs> it's true, it yeah. is the best there are no place. rules. I streamed it's the good bottom players of the last and, I, and people just could shoot whatever deck at me. Yeah. You know, like Maokai Targon, oh, Secret, oh, Secret that's Zero. Awful. Yeah. Um, I, I think Was that it the awful? person who uh, suggested that to me is listening to this episode, and you know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> that deck doesn't sound good, but that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, our next question comes from Karenol. They ask, I really like Sharima and think the region has some particularly standout cards, such as Rune Runner, Rock Hopper, etc., as well as some strong champions like Azir and Sivir. Despite that, it's still claimed to be one of the weaker regions, in part because it's lacking in density of good cards. What tools in particular do you think it is missing at the moment that future expansions might correct? I have a great answer to this. I think okay, so. Um, go. They have a lot of the good and this doesn't always happen when a region comes out. A lot of the good bread and butter cards. A lot of the, like, the mountain goats of Shurima are around, right? They're, like you said, Rock, Rock Hopper, Hopper yeah. Dune Keeper, um, uh, Rune Runner. I think that they're missing a champion that you just really want to build around that really pays you off for just, like, a great reason to be Shurima. Um, because, like, those bread and butter cards, like, Dune Keeper is not that much better than Precious Pet. Like, it, it's probably better, but, like, you know, the other Noxus cards are better. The other, you know, Shadow Isles gives you a lease, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and, uh, you know, like, they have some good ones. Sivir's a good role player. Renekton's a good role player. Nasus is, you know, Nasus is good in the deck. He's good in Azir's good in the deck. He's good in, but, like... I think you nailed it. They need a plan. Yeah, they need a really strong plan. And, like, the good Shurima decks have said plan with Thresh, Nasus, with Lucian Azir, and they synergize really well. The cards that they have are great. There's some really good cards, but they just need, like, little more. That's really interesting. They need, like, a Zoe. They need, like, a, yeah, they need, like, a Zoe or a Draven, just, like, a good champion that just makes you want to play Shurima. I, well, I really think that they need... Not necessarily just a blanket good champion, but a champion that has a plan like is, is what I think they, kind they of need. Kind of, kind of like an Ezreal kind of thing. And obviously, you know, it can't just be Ezreal, but in Shreema. But like, and I think that Talia tried to be it. And Talia's awful, yeah. right? So we can't She's do that five one. Five mana, two, four. I really, really, I think they need more like NFL Eos type card. 
something and it doesn't obviously if Felios was way too good it doesn't have to be anything that good yeah. but they need a card that has a plan that rewards that that makes you want to put these cards in your deck for any reason other than they're good on rate because good on i've talked in the past legend of runeterra is a crazy high synergy game i think uh like the synergies are where most of the games are won i find because like the cards are pretty good on power level for the most part so like you really need to find m ways to out efficient your opponent with the mana that you have and the cards that you have. And that's usually through synergies and Shreeman just doesn't really have any of those. I, I don't think yeah, like, like they're they missing really powerful synergies and they, they've got good cards, but they just need some powerful synergies. I think that's really interesting. Both of neither of you said, uh, uh, so my answer to this question is leans towards the opposite direction. Actually. Interesting. Um, I think that even though there are some of those cards like that are quote unquote bread and butter cards, like they kind of exist, but they're missing something like they're missing their mystic shot. They're missing their mountain goat. They're missing their, like there's, there are certain cards across all they're missing their sharp sight. Like there's, when you think of each region, you can probably pick out one or two cards that are just like, I, I need this card needs to be in my deck. If I'm Demacia, this card needs to be in my deck. Like exactly. Like if I'm Targon, this needs to be in. If I'm Noxus, this needs to be in. Like there's there's certain cards where they're like you just need to put certain cards from each region into your deck. Just because they're yeah, blanket ubiquitous good, right? Yeah. Right. And I think that it really feels like Sharima just doesn't have that. It doesn't have like what what's the what's Sharima's removal spell? You're right. They really don't have any removal spells. Right. right of negation is the thing that screams to me. Yeah, yeah and right, that's like right of negation uh, is the one that stands out. Right, and and the, Dune Keeper, but right? Like, like, but that's an aggro card. Yeah, you're that's right. Not, you don't just like you don't just throw Dune Keeper in every deck. Like, but you can throw Mountain uh, Mountain Goat in every deck. It's true. You can put Mountain Goat in yeah. anything. Pale Cascade. Right. Like yeah. you can put Sharp Sight in any deck, pretty much. Yeah. You can yeah, put absolutely. single combat in most decks. Yeah. Absolutely. Most Demacia decks. Yeah. Yeah. So like a little more focus, and I mean they just need more cards. Like that's just how it is when a new region comes out. Like. They need more cards. The, the, the amount of they cards have, they would have to release to have Shreem have the same amount of depths of the regions is like three, four yeah. expansions worth. Yeah, yeah, it's going to take some time. That's totally fine. I'm um, not surprised that Shreem isn't the best region. It would have had to be really pushed with the amount of cards they have, and, right? I'm so, glad it isn't. Like, I'm glad that there are some neat Shreem decks. And, yeah, I, you know, I, you can play. And, and I think that at some point, these Shreem decks are going to be very good. Like, there's no way that Shreem won't be very good in the, in the future, I think, given how Riot has designed the game and balanced it in the past. Um, but see, I don't know. I want to go back to I really think that, like, not having a Mystic Shot or whatever is fine, right? Like, you know, I look at Freljord. Like, Freljord doesn't. They have Avalanche, right? Uh, or, you know, you look at Shadow Isles. They've got like vengeance and stuff like that, but you can get these removal spells from other regions because they have good ones, right? But like, man, like, why? I, I just need a reason to play Sharima. Right a champion that I'm excited about. It's really. I, it I didn't. Uh, I didn't mean it. it didn't have to be exactly a removal. Yeah, 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 yeah not like, exactly a removal spell, but just yeah. You're right. There, there isn't anything that I really want to splash in yeah. Sharima because like when you when you think Sharima, when you think every region that's not Sharima your brain immediately goes to some card. I don't care what card it is, but it goes to some card. Yeah, some card springs right. to your mind where you're like, I'm now excited to play that card because I'm X region. That's not Sharima. Like yeah. what card right. from Sharima are you like, let's go, like, let's play this yeah. card. And like, this is also a problem that Ionia yeah, kind right. of has because the best answer is deny, right? So like, yeah, I think, I think Ionia has a similar problem. You're right. I mean, you know, that is interesting. They have a plethora of good cards, but nothing that is meta, stand like a standout meta staple. I mean, that's why I said a champion, yeah. right? Like a Draven level, like this card's just solid. Yeah, like the region doesn't actually have as many holes as it as you might think it oh, should. Yeah, it's just the ones it does have are just gaping. Like it's yeah. math. Like there's a huge just absence yeah. of a champion that you're really that's, that's, that's like a really, really defined region identity like i yeah, like know the, what freljord does better than other <laughs> regions i know what shadow isles does that one's huge that one's always shadow Isles. it's always done what shadow isles does um and just like for then it's like okay you could play this sack deck go okay we can play this like challenger deck don't even come to me with all these landmarks yeah exactly that's a that's honestly a big problem with the region is <laughs> that like a third of its cards all say landmark so those are all unplayable off the bat yeah. pretty yeah. much like, and like it has good cards like it has shape zone like that card's very yeah, powerful yeah preservarium's good thing. yeah you know but like you know i'm not like you said i'm not gonna be jumping out of my seat to put preservarium in my deck you know yeah exactly what else we got all right 
Uh, next question comes from Dragon. They ask, there are a lot of different aggressive decks currently in the meta. Which of them do you favor the most? Uh, my answer is Discard Aggro. Oh, that was my Discard answer, too. Discard Aggro is my personal favorite. I've played the most games with it. It has the highest win rate, apparently, right now. So Ooh. looks like I am looks like I was right. Yeah, that deck's really versatile. There's, like, you can kill him with a crowd favorite. You can kill him with just a vision. Like, I just, like, died to, like... I played a game on stream where they just, like, had um, Urchin, Urchin into Story Rig, like, House Spider, uh, Vision, Vision. I was just like, just oh, dead. my God. Yeah. yeah. And that's, you know, that game didn't have Jinx in it. That game didn't have... Um, crowd favorite in it um, and it, it's just very versatile Jinx finishes a lot of games and they just have get excited to go to the face so um so for me huh well I hate discard aggro wow. I kind of hate spiders <laughs> um I also hate nightfall I mean the answer must be pirates right yes there we go it's pi I was like I was thinking about all these oh. aggro decks I'm like what do I like any of them? You don't like spiders? You've been playing so much of it. Oh, that's because it climbs real fast. Like, yeah. uh, like that's because we're spikes. <laughs> yeah, yeah no, nothing about that deck is sweet. No, <laughs> you know? there's there's zero parts of spiders where I'm like, oh yeah, let's go. You I get to play. <laughs> you don't one draw drops. the you don't draw like, the second Stygian onlooker, and you're like, yeah, yeah synergy. No, <laughs> you're just like, I'm gonna kill like, you. <laughs> it does excite me quite a bit when I get to play four Stygian onlookers in one turn and swing. But like, that's because that's nuts. But it, like, yeah. It's because I'm winning that yeah, game. That's, that's a that's a spike thrill, not not a not a Johnny thrill. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, it's it's definitely pirates. Pirates has been like my favorite aggro deck, I think, forever. So yeah, that's that's a good answer. All right, Mister Purple asks, "What are your thoughts on alternate win cons? Are they healthy or just toxic?" All right, I'll lead with this one. So I I don't have a problem with alternate win cons. I don't think. Um, and as soon as you like alternate win cons, so they're usually just cards that say you win the game on them. Yep. So it, it's interesting if like, like, so like I would count the watcher as an alternate win con. I think I would count like, like Fiora, obviously I would almost to a certain extent count Lee Sin as an alternate win con at least feels yeah. like closer, I'd, closer I'd to an alternate so, yeah. win con than most of most agree, of the yeah. rest of legends of Runeterra has. Uh, I, I have no problem with alternate win cons. I think it's an interesting the, the problem I have with them is that they are most likely to create these like rock, paper, scissors, metas. I've, I think where like, because my deck operates on a different axis than the rest of the game, it, it's innately going to be harder to interact with assuming it's good. Right. Yeah. Because it's just like, you know, I'm going to win with something that isn't your life total, the board essentially, like I'm going to win in some other way. And so that can, lead to unhealthy metas but i think more more often it leads to uh interesting dive uh interesting decision points that are different that you'll get in other games and i think the diversity is really good so. yeah i absolutely agree i was gonna say that um i also have no problems inherently with alternate win cons i think the problem problems that arise from alternate win cons come from um the moment you decrease the ability to interact with said alternate win con the problem like the problem it can be exponentially increases yeah. like every point where you remove a potential uh, uh point interaction, of interaction yeah um makes the makes how problematic it can be go up dramatically and th i think this is like the case with um lee zoe versus uh the watcher combo yeah right like the watcher combo there's not really any point where you can really interact with the combo like Lee Sin you can silence him you can kill him you can counter the spell he makes you can kill your own unit you can you kill can, your own unit like there's so many avenues unit, spell shield exactly there's so many avenues to interact with what Lee Sin's doing to you to kill you instantly the watcher is just like you can't respond to someone playing a creature they just play the creature and then the thing happens mm -hmm. You can't respond to someone attacking. They attack, and the attack. If happens. they have the watcher in play, and it's their turn to open, they will always obliterate your deck. Right, exactly. Like there's, there's, there's things about the watcher combo that just you can't interact with them very well. Like the best way to do it is to make sure Lissandra's not in play. Like, yeah, that's I, not a. Very you also good can't point. interact with assuming they don't play it until turn eight when it's af after it's already flipped or exactly. whatever. Exactly. Yeah. Like, and I do think it's cool that they make you think about new things. It makes you think about keeping your champ spell in hand or your lost twitches. Like us having that conversation about yeah. why deep is actually good at these being are, the watcher. These are play patterns that don't exist it's in cool. any other game. Right? Yeah. And that's really neat. 
Um, but you know, there, there, there's a power level concern and there's interactability concern because like the further your thing gets removed from combat, exponentially fewer the things that you can interact with it, it in. Um, because this game is built around combat because so many different things are combat tricks are withering whales or removal spells that all, you know, this access of attacking your opponent's life total. And so the further you get away from that, the harder it is. This is why I don't think Fiora fundamentally was a problem. She was a little overtuned and her deck was a little too good, but it wasn't fundamentally a problem that she needed to kill five units or four units in combat. Yeah, I, I think it's I think it's really funny that the only card that says you win the game on it was Fiora and like the Watcher, uh Lee Sin, yeah. um God even there's like there's been a few other infinite you know, mill. Um, there's like some random infinite mill stuff. Yeah, the like veteran infinite veteran investigators yeah. one. Like, yeah, it's. I think it's crazy that that we're like, yeah, those are the alternate win cons that are a problem. Not not the fewer the only one that actually says I win the I win game the, on. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, totally. Which is kind of fun. Um, yeah, absolutely. Or like you know even the like Ledros timeline thing, which I would call an alternate win con. Oh, it's definitely an alternate win right? con. Right, like you know, yeah, that every, people had a lot of problem with that. Once again, didn't say when the game on. You know, it's oh, the only card that said I win the game on is it's probably the most fine. fair. It did get nerfed, but like I think it got nerfed for reasons that were not Fiora. <laughs> yeah, that were not Fiora win con being too strong. It was just like you know that the, deck killed with damage often more than it killed with Fiora. Like, way, oh, the problem yeah. was way more the often. deck being too good. Yes, and way more Fiora, often. nerfing Fiora, Fiora happened to. Fiora was a good target at that deck yeah. to nerf because she was kind of like a, a linchpin of the deck. Right, yeah. She was really good, but I don't think Fiora was the best card in that deck. Fiora just removed a very key Shen weakness of the deck. Screeching Dragon a lot of the time. It was like Shen or Screeching Dragon. Yeah. yeah. All, right. All right. Our next question comes from Dr. Blues. They ask, I'd like to know what your thoughts are on the feeling of burnout on the game. I'm not a particularly competitive player, uh, but often feel tired from playing and not really willing to go through long hour uh, through, excuse me, hour long battles of attrition. They often drain more energy than provide with entertainment. What are your tips on how to go about it? All right. So I'll, I'll, I'll start real quick. I think so. First off, if you're if you're ending up feeling more drained than you think it's it's really worth it or whatever. Um, oftentimes, my best solution is like play a different deck, right? Like if you take aren't a, having fun, take a break. Yeah, yeah. If you aren't having fun with the particular deck, play a different deck. If you still don't have fun with that, it's fine to take a break. It's amazing how much a week off from a game can can like improve your mentality towards a game. I've taken week long breaks from Legends of Runeterra, right? Like it's nice sometimes to just not think about it for a week, you know, like, like if, especially if your brain is constantly turning, especially if it's a hobby, right? Like, you know, if you aren't trying to play competitively or seriously or anything, then there's really no harm in taking a break. Don't force yourself to don't force yourself to play it when you aren't having fun because your longevity is going to go way down. That's how you end up playing a game for three months and then never playing it again is you're like, I don't know what else to do. I'm gonna play this game. I hate this game. And then you never touch it again. It's way better to take a one week break. Yeah, I yeah. think um, moderation. Very important. Um, yeah, uh, important to do things that you find fun. Like I had a stream the other day where, like I said, I just played like any jank deck that someone put in my in Check. my chat. And that was very refreshing. Like yeah. the decks were bad. I lost a lot. That was fine. Yeah, Ended absolutely. up at zero P didn't matter. I had a great time. Yeah. Totally. Try the laps, baby. The oh, labs, the are, labs are so sick. Yeah. Um, two two things that I do to help with the burnout problem. One is to always have a game. Uh, it doesn't have to, like, it can be a few games. It doesn't have to be one. But at least one game where you're like, as the moment you turn off Legends of Runeterra, you can go play that instead. Like, you have a go-to, like, alternate thing to do. Um, for a while it was Hades, uh, right now, uh, for a while it was Gunfire Reborn. Um, there's always League on the back burner for me, but that's only if I have people to play it with. Yeah. You know, like, have have a go-to game that you're willing to just turn off Legends of Terra for and just, you know, have fun with that instead. Um, preferably something that doesn't have a ladder system, so you don't have to worry about that. Something yeah. that you should play for you. Um, the other thing is to like like you both said just take a break like you you can't miss playing legends of terra if you're playing legends of terra like yeah. absolutely yeah, yeah. <laughs> after i haven't played legends for two for two or three days you know sometimes sometimes i'm just like i don't really want to play for the next two or three days and then i don't and then after the third day i'm like oh man and then you're like, excited like, again i cannot wait to slam people with some zoe Asol yeah. or whatever you know that happens a lot so 
Yeah, and and one thing that uh, yeah, uh, I had something that really good that I was gonna say, and then uh, the door started banging in our recording studio. <laughs> yeah, like, well, totally distracted. Well, if we, if you think of it, we'll get back to you. Uh, our last question comes from Time. They ask, "How do you overcome weaknesses in your play?" I mean, the first step is to I identify the weaknesses I actually, I actually think that that that's, that's the hardest part the first and really the most important step so like i mean i'm pretty stubborn i don't like i don't like it when i make a bad play and somebody tells me my play was bad i'm like no i you know you defend it a little bit in your head and then uh and then but re- really like that doesn't help anyone right like that doesn't help anything 95 percent of the battle for me is acknowledging that uh i have a weakness in my play and then if you just think about trying to fix it, whatever it is, you know, maybe you're mulliganing badly. Maybe you're too passive. Maybe you aren't thinking about your opponent's counterplay options enough. You know, there's a million things that you could improve on in Legends of Runeterra. And you, you just need to notice what your weaknesses are. If you make the same mistake twice, you know, remember it and and tell yourself, like, I made that mistake twice. I need to fix that in the future. You don't have to be any harder on yourself than that. Like, right? Like, it doesn't have to be, I'm so bad. I can't believe I did this again. I'm awful. There's a big difference between I made that same mistake twice. I'm going to make sure I don't do that again. And and that right. Like, and that's, I think the big one is like acknowledge that you you're making a mistake, tell yourself you need to fix it. And the next time your brain is going to remember it. If you just like, even just like say it out loud, like I, you know, on turn five, I need to play around screeching dragon. If If you screw up and lose three games to that in a row or whatever, three games in a day, even, yeah. Just say it out loud. Be like, I need to play around Screeching Dragon on turn five. You'll be shocked how easy, how like quickly it comes to the front of your mind the next time, I think. Uh, and this is what I was going to say last time uh, is a big part of that burnout is to be really good at something, to really be competitive at something. It takes a lot of work, a yeah. lot of time. Absolutely. Uh, and that's a big reason that burnout comes is because you just need to put in a lot of hours to climb, a lot of hours to get good, to get comfortable with the deck. It involves a lot of losing it always does um and that's a big thing with putting uh with weaknesses in your game too like once you've identified it you just gotta put in the work to do it you gotta you know be talking about it be playing with someone else that's going to notice that and point out things um streaming with someone else in my channel has been huge because it's like being able to hear exactly what they would do there um matters a lot yeah Yeah. making sure you have people whose opinion like you aren't just gonna throw out like absolutely you know having having people that you respect their opinion around you matters a lot because they can tell you something that they think was better and like like you'll listen to them right you're more likely to be like yes you're right instead of what what you know yeah you both touched on most of what i uh could think of to say the only thing i'd want to add is um one of the harder parts for me is when you identify what a problem that you have maybe have a problem or what the problem is um something that i have struggled with a lot is sort of drawing false correlations between things like this is a problem because i'm doing this when in reality it's something else like like false positives like i'm yeah false positive like i'm losing to um tlc because i'm mulliganing poorly when in reality i'm playing my like turns three through six very poorly like there's there's things I'm doing that I think are the problem, but aren't actually the problem. The problem is somewhere else. And that that's once hard. again circles around to identify the problem. Like that's that's really hard to do. There's a bunch of reasons why it's hard to do. And whether it's because you don't want to admit you have a problem or because it's just hard to find, like, you know. Yeah. So I think so in particular, it feels like there's an infinite list of things that that any one person can get better at in this game, right? Like for me, especially it feels like, all right, you know, I made that mistake twice. I'm not going to make that mistake again. And, and you know, they can be brought at first, but eventually you're going to start getting into specific things. Like, you know, like I didn't play around uh sharp sight into hush into single combat. Like I just didn't even think about it at all. Like I can't do that again. Right. Or whatever. Like, and, and there's a near infinite combinations of these type of things. Right. And so, Basically, you just try to constantly get better, right? Like acknowledging weaknesses as a player goes a long way, but just telling yourself that you have to fix the things, you're going to have infinite things you need to fix over the course of your time playing the game. It's a and that's process. fine. So does everyone, right? Yeah. Like literally everyone has theoretically infinite things they could be better at. Um, 
So I think most of it is just uh, finding how you resonate like with yourself, like like what you need to say to yourself, what you need to do in your own mind to to correct your problems. You know, a lot of people can't, you know, can't look at a problem, see it and acknowledge that that was a problem and then they'll remember it later, right? Yeah, like, you absolutely. know, sometimes people are just going to forget about it and they're, they're going to make the same mistake over and over again. And if that's you... I don't really know what the what the fix is, but once you find it, you just need to acknowledge it, right? Like knowing it's there means you're going to be able to find a way to yeah. deal with it if you seriously care about dealing with it. Absolutely. I think. Yeah, and I think the last thing I would want to say on this is um, be patient. Just just be patient. Like you'll, with yourself. Yeah. As long as as long as you keep playing, you will improve. Um, it might be slow. It might be small improvements, but you will improve. Like just you you can't. It's really hard to not get better at something if you do it all the time. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely true. All right. And that was our last question for the week. So I want to thank you all for listening to this episode. A quick reminder, we have uh, continued streaming. We're streaming six days a week at twitch.tv slash champ select podcast. So if you're interested, uh, we'll be live six days a week, so you'll probably be able to find us anytime. We announce when we're going live every time in our Discord and Twitter. You can find the link to our Discord uh, wherever you're listening to this is in the description, as well as the link to our Twitter. Our Discord is great. You definitely want to be a part of our Discord. There's constantly conversations going on, so if you aren't in the Discord yet, make sure you join the Discord. Uh, we've got a bunch of stuff working in the pipelines that we're pretty excited about, so hopefully uh, in a couple weeks or whatever, we're going to have some some exciting new content to share, but uh can't get into it too too many details, but uh, let's see. Do either of you guys have anything you want to add to to the end? Just uh, as always, thank you for listening. Yep. All right. Join the Discord. Make sure you join the Discord. And without any further ado, we will see you all in the next episode of Champ Select. Mm-hmm.